Hey gang, this is Fillmore, just letting you know that if you enjoy our podcast, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, and you'd like to donate some money for the upkeep, uh, or you want to request certain clips, please donate to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash jimfix. That's J-I-M-F-I-X-X. You can donate as much as you want for as long as you want. There's absolutely no obligation. How old are you? Right now, 54. And you're going to a psychiatrist four days a week. Three days now. Three days a week. Yeah. I'm 17. I go one fucking time. I'm the guy that's fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) What if I strolled in a girl who's into geeky looking, pelican fucking odd guy? I cared about you. And and she's got a fetish. She's into pelicans. Bring her in. (laughs) And uh, and the whole pelican. Yeah, Yeah, you're saying I'm fat. The whole segment is about fat. The whole segment is is about this odd chick. Like in an obese, disgusting Fuck guy. Off. You're a fucking asshole. So, why? I met a great girl. Yeah. Okay. The world is full of great girls. No. She's it's hot. Just... Yes. She's hot. Yes. She talks. Yes. She listens. Good in bed. She, she's good in bed. Right. Yeah, because that's rare. Uh, Move into Sam's house and get the fuck out of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Fat we'll get beat. We'll get Beetlejuice to pick out our yeah, Get fatter. Get fatter, Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> We're more of those fucking. <laughs> Beetlejuice will pick out Howard Church. You can look at Sam and blow him. What must the rest of your life be like? And uh, Doesn't it remind you? Did you ever see the Twilight Zone with the little kid who wants everyone to be happy? And if they're not, then he kills them? I think, uh, well, I don't think you're at, I don't think you're at that me. level, but there's a little bit of truth in that. I mean, and look, and again. When I was a little kid, yeah, he just slowed it down. When I was a little kid, my dad would take me to ball games. I would sit there with my hands over my head. I was so scared of getting hit well, by a ball. Yeah. You've been going out with this chick for two years? Yeah. Yeah. Met at Shabbat dinner. Who is she? <laughs> Met at Shabbat With Brenda. <laughs> ah, that's brilliant. Who is she? She's only the love of your life. She's Beth. Beth. Wait a minute. I know somebody who knows Beth, but... Who is it? I'm trying to think who it is. Somebody who went to school with her or something. No, 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 it's not something weird. I can't remember now, but it's 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 one of those weird stories. Like, I think she always wanted to be with somebody famous. Was the same. oh, stop. oh man, <laughs> somebody said that really? Tell you the truth, man. Here's some guy. That's the problem with radio. Some guy who's managing an automotive parts store yeah. is telling you how to uh, do your radio show. Meanwhile, I'm a genius. Absolutely. Well, maybe straight. We did teach you how to steal material. That was good. That was true. You did teach me how to do that. <laughs> We're good. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our latest breakdown. This is a kind of Halloweenish breakdown, from quite frankly. Uh, Howard Stern Podcast. I'm your host, Fillmore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, a.k.a. Fillmore Fingers. And with me is, as always, is the Breakdown Sensei, Raven. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you don't bogart all your kids' Reese's peanut butter cups. Uh, I hope (laughs) they come away with something. Uh, If there's any... uh, uh, The... um, Halloween, I don't know how during COVID how it's being happen, uh, how it's being handled, like uh, ju- like what do you call it? Uh, what's that thing they do now with kids sometimes? Trunk, trunk Halloween. Oh, um, um, yeah, they they go have a trunktober. Uh, I don't know what it's called. You you basically decorate the trunk of your car, or your vehicle. Yeah, and yeah. you go to a parking lot at your local township or mm. uh, rec center, and then. Kids come around and they all you hand out candy to them. It's right. trunk or treat. That's trunk what we treat. call it. You, perfect. You got it. You see, this is, it would take a non-parent to not be able to know what that meant. <laughs> and guys, I'm guilty as charged. I love children, but uh, I just can't remember some of these terms. At any rate, um, hope everybody's safe for Halloween. We are going to tackle today the days of October 20th to October 21st and the 28th, and we'll explain why we've skipped over some stuff as we go through them. So the first on the 20th, uh, there's not, it wasn't no, it wasn't really noteworthy for anything, was it? Other than the initial shitting on (laughs) Simone Dinnerstein. Right. That was the, um, it started off the show with that, and it was basically an advertisement that Robin did to promote her friend, Right. And, um, you know, she's so charitable. So that was her doing a freebie for a friend and it kind of turned and you'll see what happens. But the other thing that day, which I don't think we're covering, was the contest for the prettiest dick, yep. which uh, was just 
awful. And, and I know we'll get to it next time we do a breakdown with some other stuff it's kind of related to. So, yeah. Trust so me, guys, first... you did not miss anything. <laughs> okay. So, guys, hold on to your labias, and we're going to go with sh- number one, <laughs> shitting, shitting on Simone. Are you really good friends with Simone and Dinnerstein, or are you like yeah. You must be if you're doing this. Yeah, I see her all yeah. the time on Zoom. <laughs> all right, I'm going to give you a, a question. You're on a boat, and the boat is sinking. You're on there with Simona Dinnerstein and Fred Norris. Who do you say? Yes. Fred. Fred. Oh. Yeah. You would let Simona die. I wouldn't want to. No. Now, before we get, go any further, because that's a th- unfortunately a 33-second clip, guys, so we have a, we would have to stop it anyway. Um, She doesn't hesitate, first of all. There's a, something pretentious about her, her name is spelled Simone, but they're calling it calling her Simona. Is that some kind of she she affectation that this idiot is is insisting she goes by, or is that just Wiggy being seventy nine? All signs point to yes on the uh, pretentious level. I I yeah. don't know. I I was spelling it wrong throughout the entire thread we did because I had no <laughs> clue. But well, yeah, that's they fine. Say Simona, I mean, but it's not it's spelled Simone. I mean, <laughs> you say we say Wiggy, we don't say Wiggy. <laughs> um, but, uh, at any, at any rate, so she goes through, so this, this is, we'll play the rest of the clip and then, uh, uh go ahead. Well, of course but not. I you don't want anyone. The show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Smart answer. It's not going to come here and work puppets. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> right. Yeah. Simo- does Simona Diniston work puppets? <laughs> <laughs> Initially, what I thought was, it, it, to be honest, I, I heard it. I didn't think it was all that awful, except if you know what, who Wiggy is and he was passively aggressively shitting on Charity, but also shitting on Simona Dinnerstein, shitting on Robin's relationship with her. You know, it was, it was, it was meant uh, to be as, as reductive as possible. Right. Because Robin got more airtime than usual discussing this and he let her go and go. But in right after that, I mean, he just unloaded with questions (sighs) and getting very personal with the whole relationship and what Simona does, you know. For money these days yep. and how hard it is to be a musician yep. that was kind of um he very passive aggressive yet in a way that you know he he just dismissed her as mm-hmm. you know someone who was going to work at the olive garden or something but yeah, keep in that... mind we've we've had the this thought for a long time that robin and robin has a crush on simona i, I don't think, think so. simona returns it in the same way i think they're more of people who run in the same circles pretentious circles that is that have um mutual admiration maybe for each other of some sort with their money and they both get something from each other where she gets mentions on the show and robin gets to go to these events and meet yep uh famous musicians and travel Mm -hmm. around in the circles that she believes she's entitled to yeah so i mean it threatens her relationship with simona what went well, down it, this day what i didn't realize until we started doing the 15 foundation saga which by the way guys will be back to recording part three sometime in the coming week i believe uh and that'll be released after we get this out and after we get uh, another surprise out which i won't talk about just yet but a lot of people have been asking for it um sorry i'm <laughs> being shamelessly uh, uh obscure um the she has a connection with simona dinnerstein since 12 years ago. Right. Like that, that's the first mentions of it. And it's like, this is grifter time. This is Brendan Murphy time. And it would not surprise me one bit if Simone is just using Robin for any, whatever notoriety she can get out of it. Right. It's, it's, um, Robin's just a speakerphone for her and Mm -hmm. a free advertisement that in, in exchange, Robin gets her name on the show. She gets to hob, hobnob with people. If we ever do get back to real life, in-person live events, then Robin gets front and center tickets to things or backstage passes. You know, she gets to go to the after party. These are all things. Now, I don't know with her health if she'll ever be out in that kind of social circle again. So this is just her fulfilling, I believe, an obligation to a friend who asked her a favor. Mm -hmm. And Howard was like, sure, I'll give you the favor because I'm I'm sure it got approved too to discuss. As just, oh, I just have a quick blurb, but then 
you know, it, it, she didn't realize yeah. who she works for and it was going to get <laughs> exactly. turned around on her. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So no, number two, I'll do it. In, I'll read it in my best Brian John's voice. Is Simone worth a lot of money? Yeah. Is she rich from playing the piano? Do you know what, like, what's her house like? I mean, or is she just kind of struggling? She is like most musicians who work, play classical music. She Broke. does. <laughs> she's not broke. <laughs> right. But she's not rich. But it's not like being a rock star. Yeah. Not like it used to be. But she right. should be better known. And she's such a an incredible talent. She's a gift. Well, sorry, guys, but classically playing the repertory stuff is not the big draw it was 50 years ago or 40 years ago. And the fact is the reason why a lot of classical music musicians get not shit on but disregarded is because they don't actually create anything. They're not composers. And most people, I would, I don't know, like I'm, I'm the kind of guy when I'm 60, I'll, I'll sooner reach for DOA than fucking Dvorak or, uh, you know, like right. <laughs> bad, bad brains instead of Bach. So I like classical music, some pieces, but I, I'm not a huge fan. And, and li- in the live setting, um, I don't really, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, so this <laughs> next one, <laughs> asking if Simone moonlights at Olive Garden. <laughs> Isn't it sad how good she is and she has to get a side gig at the Olive Garden? I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, stop it. You're just oh, disgusting. She I'm does joking. not work at the Olive, Olive Garden. She she does all kinds of things. She teaches others. Right, She's I know. I'm kidding. so prolific and, and generous with her time and her talent. Well, well Robin, I am. Joke. Okay, so first off, there's Robin sort of backing her up. And and I, I think this is, if Simone is really Robin's friend, shouldn't she know that this is the asshole that Robin works with? And this isn't, this isn't as bad as he could get? I honestly don't believe Simone has ever heard any of this show up until uh-huh. this point. When one of her people said, you've got to hear what Robin and Howard said about you on the show. And mm-hmm. when he asks if... He asked Robin if Simona's broke. Robin's <laughs> like, oh, no. Yeah. And she she has no sign at this point of being angry or upset mm-hmm. with him. Right. She completely is just playing along like, oh, you silly. No, it's she's perfectly fine. But this is yeah. something to get her out, you know, and show off her talents, blah, blah, blah. Right. So pay attention to Robin's voice. The tone in her voice is totally playful. There's nothing yeah. angry here. Somebody no. got to her. Mm-hmm. Somebody got in her ear that night and yep. she came back on fire the next day. That's right. So number four, Simone waking up Simona. Sorry, I'm going to make that mistake all the, th- through this episode, guys. Simona w- waking up with a lump of shit in her mouth. That's what I was doing when you heard me this morning. I was singing oh. to the... I'm at the concert with Robin and Simona Dynastine. Oh. This is the music I'm going to use when I hang myself. <laughs> they were making fun Ooh. of Philip, Gla- Philip Glass uh, compositions because he supposedly wrote some pieces for Simona to play and whatnot. Now, uh, I, I, I hate to say it, but I agree with him in this respect. I fucking hate uh, that that sort of that composi- that type of composition. But either way, yeah, go ahead. It's not my music either. I'd, I'm more of a jazz girl. But mm. if I want sad music or something to take me out without words. Anyway, Ro- Howard <laughs> says, that's what I'm going to hang myself to. How dark is that? No yeah. wonder sh- this woman got mad at him or right. her and what they said. And it gets darker. I hope you have it. <laughs> okay. R- number, let me see if I get it. Number five, Robin encapsulates King Baby perfectly. They asked me. I said, yeah. You're, you're a good person. You know, when people ask me, there's an immediate no. Well, uh, maybe you don't care about anybody. That's right. <laughs> I do care about other people, but don't bother me. Do the mash. Do the monster mash. So we, we really have the worst of both worlds, guys. Him singing shitty bits and them two, two of them laughing about his narcissism. But the last clip is number six. Sorry, Simone, your ass fucking is not yet complete. By the way, I learned that Van Halen never had a concert where you could decide how much you wanted to pay to see them. Uh, that's a complete innovation by Robin and Simona Dynasty, just so you know. <laughs> Van Halen always had ticket prices. Very tacky. Okay, so I don't, I don't know if I got the clip you were looking for, but what, if I didn't, what, what did I miss? Uh, okay, he talked about 
uh, worshiping Satan to the music. Oh, yes. And he had it playing in the background and child sacrifice to yeah. the Satan music. Right. Whoa. Whoa, I just, whoa, whoa. I just wanted to get the, the flavor of this, but <laughs> I must have missed that. I did hear that, but I, I thought it's it's because the problem was there was also a lot of background music, and I thought I can't I can't put our listeners through this horse shit. Well, there was one other quote I think that is worth bringing up that Robin says to Howard: <laughs> "We all know what you like is best." So yes. She is starting to dig her feet in and, and start jabbing back, but the jabbing will happen on the on the next day for real. So the next so the next day took up the first forty five minutes, I would say. And we're gonna have to go through most yep. of that because it is just on par with, you know, uh, I'd like to apologize to my wife Nancy or hi, I'm Sal Governali. <laughs> I mean, every, I get, I get accused. My intros actually, I get, I get, I get teased on YouTube. They say, people say I sound like Sal when he's doing his apology, when I'm plugging the Patreon thing and I, I can hear it. I greatly appreciate your time. Um, number one is Robin defends Simona's honor, sort of. It's one of those mornings. Time for me to go to sleep because I didn't get any sleep last night. Oh, you're going to be cranky. You know I'm I don't like when you don't sleep. Because the reason I couldn't get any sleep was that it wasn't until I put my head on the pillow that my brain got a hold of me. Uh oh. About the start of the show yesterday. Ah, go ahead. And uh. Well, what? So I had to break it up, guys, because right. this is an eight minute. And this is an eight minute clip, but I find it funny. First of all, was she supposed to sleep standing up? <laughs> it hit her oh. when her head hit the pillow. I don't get this uh, logic, but you're absolutely right. That was the time to defend Simona, which she sort of did, I guess. Yeah. But I, I think Robin legitimately thought he didn't say anything that bad, and so she wouldn't have to defend anything. So that's why she didn't go any harder. But she only reason she's doing this is you're correct. Someone got after her and said, you fucking bitch, how dare you do this? And they tore a yard off Robin's ass. Otherwise, there's no way she would even right. attempt to do this. Yeah, it um, it's going to come down to him being like, what did I say? I don't remember anything. He loves not yep. knowing. He's yep. going to play stupid. He's mm -hmm. going to be like, oh, that was a joke. Doesn't anybody have a sense of humor? humor wow. and yeah. she had a chance the day before to stand up to him and go how dare you this yeah. is serious and important to me and you're making a joke out of it call him on that the, when it happens and i thought she had more backbone than that but she just you know she knows her role in the show she tried to keep it up but she doesn't know her role to friends yep because Wiggy comes first, and they're all secondary. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just let's... it just shows you they're both they're both shitty friends. Uh, they're <laughs> both non they're non friends. I mean, maybe that's what happens when you're friends with a narcissist. Is the you start know, of the show? That was when you were talking about the Simona Dennis Dean concert. Yes, it's a big concert. Robin is hosting. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't start patronizing me right off the bat. All right. You can say anything to me that you want when we're just kibitzing about I'm fine being Dame Robin Quivers or whatever that is. Yes. But there, you know, there was a time that Simona came to me. And, and OK, just a break, guys, and we'll go right back into it. And she said, Robin, I heard that every once in a while my name comes up on the show and uh, people tell me that I'm a joke. OK, hmm. so. You, I think you, you hit the nail on the head, even though I'd already heard this. Um, someone, it wasn't Simona, it was someone who knew Simona and basically told her. It was the same way all the, the uh, wives used to hear about shit going on in the show, and then they'd find out, <laughs> already said, you know, there's four hairdressers in Jersey going, did you hear that <laughs> monster, that disgusting monster? <laughs> like, telling Dana about stuff that was after the fact, like third-hand information. So... Yeah, uh, he he's doing the whole like little uh, NPD two step where he's going. Oh, well, hmm, well, uh, you know what's and this? Her her voice is quivering. She's quivers. Yeah. Quivers a lie, but 
her voice is is really shaky. Like she wants yes. to get this right. She has to make amends. Uh, she starts off with, "Don't you patronize me? You mm-hmm. be quiet. You let me talk." And right. she puts him in his place because she also used phrases like, "You crossed the line. You trivialized. You disrespected. You criticized." And it just she just rails into him. So let's hear more of that. We will, but in a second, before I ask, before not before I ask this question, which is, so in this situation, her, her meal ticket is next to her or across the way from her, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, but she's got this connection with Simona Dinnerstein for years and years and years. Is this Robin going, he's, he's going to be temporary because when we're all done, he won't have anything to do with me, but she's going to be a part of my life after this show. So I have to make this right. I'm curious how many friends she has in her inner circle Mm -hmm. i don't know but 12 years is a long time to know somebody Mm -hmm. that's a lot of history and it sounds to me that she knows him so well that when it's over it's over with him like yeah there'll be flowers there'll be you know he'll send stuff but he's not going to show up no he's probably not putting her in the will which we've all you know speculated (laughs) and (laughs) she kind of realizes like she's walking a tightrope where she has to balance herself with her boss and her earnings and keeping up those earnings so that she can have the lifestyle that she wants with the friends Mm -hmm. that she has. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, she had to grow a pair of girly balls. She had to come out and say, I didn't defend my friend enough. You were a dick and now you need to apologize. Mm -hmm. But we know how his apologies (laughs) go. (laughs) Yeah, they're, sh- they're 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 like you read up read up about what's not an apology, and later on you'll hear the "I'm sorry if you got offended." I'm sorry if Simona mm-hmm. took offense, which is not an apology. You're not actually apologizing for anything you did. You're keeping it in the realm of possibility instead of actually admitting I did wrong. You're right. I fucked up. My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. And he does sort of, but not really. On your show. And I said, no, they're making fun of me, Simona. They're not making fun of you. That's right. But yesterday I thought it crossed the line because you, I felt you trivialized her accomplishments and um, disrespected all of the time and energy she's put into cultivating her. I had to cut it, guys. Uh, it's, it's, it does, it's uh, the problem I have, I'm having with this so-called confrontation is that she sounds awful at it. I mean, maybe she's nerves. You might, you might chalk it up to nerves and I don't think she has stuff written in front of her, but she doesn't sound genuine. It doesn't sound like she really wants to apologize at all. Like she doesn't want to get him to apologize. Oh no. I think she has this written out almost like I have notes next to me from the the show. I listen to like a mental patient and (laughs) I think she is trying to get the words out with importance and spacing. But remember, oxygen is not her friend. She (laughs) has trouble speaking full sentences without taking a pause. We know this because back the past couple years when she reads the news or used to read the news, rest in peace news for gone forever, (laughs) that we used to pick apart how she'd mispronounce words, get numbers wrong, uh, names, and... She used to need like we we joke that there is time to refill her oxygen tank because she just couldn't <laughs> get everything out. And I'm I'm very sympathetic to her situation. I admire her for working through the cancer. I yeah. admire her for trying to keep up with the show at her age. She's mm-hmm. 68. Yep. So I have respect for her work ethic. I do <clears throat> appreciate that. It's just you're putting yourself out there, so you're a public figure. We have every right to say what we want about you. And I think that her pausing in this state, in this instance, is just to get the apology right. Mm, It could be. Uh, But if anybody wants uh, an analogy, I'm sorry, I'm going to throw SCTV into it. Look up Brenda Vaccaro, uh, Andrea Martin doing Brenda Vaccaro (laughs) advertising Playtex tampons. (laughs) It's one of the best sketches, especially when you hear the original Brenda Vaccaro commercial and play them back to back. Uh, Let's continue. Art. And I have to correct that 
now. All right. Fair enough. She is a Juilliard graduate. She got into Juilliard at 16. She's what you call a child prodigy. And she also went to London as a very young person to continue to pursue her studies. She didn't just get some, you know, little lessons and... Okay, break, break, uh, just a little break. Uh, Juilliard, Juilliard, Juilliard and Berkeley are both the big music schools in the United States that I'm, that I know of. And they're a little, I mean, they're, they're prestigious, absolutely, but they're also, they're kind of a joke in the music industry as well, because anybody who really makes it, most people don't get classically trained. Like that's sort of the, that's sort of the conundrum. You can be a classically trained like Randy Rhodes was classically trained. Eddie Van Halen was classically trained. Where do they make their bones? Rock and roll. Okay. So, yeah. My knowledge of classical training and music goes as far back as, remember the TV sitcom Fame? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> At least the first couple that, seasons. That's how I view uh, classical training. That That's right. my history of it. I'm not a music person. I love music, right. but not. Yeah. I don't have the knowledge to discuss it. So yeah, for you no TV buffs, I just, that's my history. I, I, I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> you had a big crush on Leroy, admit it. Of course. <laughs> you didn't. We were able to tinkle on the piano and make pretty music. No, she wanted to completely study this music and keep it alive. And she's dedicated her whole life to that. She's put out a number of albums. Each one of them has gone to number one on the Billboard charts. She has a following all over the world. She doesn't need me to get an audience. She doesn't need this show to get an audience. She has her own following. They just have the guy who's putting together. Yep, go ahead. She has a following and doesn't need the show. Yet she's using the show. Yeah. In this case. So. Mm hmm. I'm just confused. I think Robin's just doing her rebuttal on yeah. and a backtrack, you know, like a two step, giving her resume, trying mm-hmm. to show her as Saint Simona, mm-hmm. which, you know, I'm I'm not trying to take away from Simona. Don't no. get me wrong. She deserves whatever credit she's earned for a long career. Kudos to you. But mm-hmm. you're on the Howard Stern show. You had you had to know if you were a joke in the past, don't you think you'd still be a joke in the present? Well, yeah, and also the fact that he knows nothing about music, so it, to him, and he he the, his closest uh, the the thing he used to keep saying was, "Oh, my piano teacher killed himself." I'm like, well, I'm surprised yeah. everybody in your life hasn't killed themselves because so many have. Um, but yeah, go ahead. If that's not symbolic, I don't know what is for the skater boy music producer. <laughs> exactly. Whether this concert, Elliot Forrest, is a, a host on WQXR, and he's a huge fan of yours and a huge fan of the show, and he knows that Simona and I are friends. And he just said, you know what? People like Simona can't perform now. They close down every concert hall in when i can't perform it <laughs> read my mind i can't perform at the uh, at the olympia in amsterdam when yeah hey, good hey, Fillmore, my kids can't make new friends because they're stuck at home all the time yeah they can't get up for school online i have to tutor them while i'm at work listening to howard stern well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, guys. We're not shitting on the arts. I mean, the comedians. I, I'm more in tune with I, 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 with podcasts or whatever. The comedians can't perform, so they're they're pulled. They're resort. They're resorting to doing stand up for drive in theater crowds, <laughs> which yeah. is really funny because we've some of these places don't even exist anymore. They did when we were we were growing up, but then they got torn down, and you know, Blockbuster took over and Jumbo Video and all the shit. But then. Uh, so times change. Now we're sort of regressing back to a point. Like, did you see that uh, Dave Chappelle uh, performance after the George Floyd thing where he it was it was more like a manifesto than than comedy. So I'm not going to judge right. it on the merits of comedy. I watched it. Yeah. But it was it was interesting socially. It was interesting. But as, as an experiment. But I, I it, you know, it, it it's not the same as being in a club. So I feel bad for the comics. I feel bad for the musicians. They really can't tour. So some of them are doing Zoom. Some of them are doing that thing where you pay what you want because that's at least it's something. Yeah, I mean, even people like Post Malone who did the Nirvana tribute yep. from his house. Great idea. 
let's have more mm-hmm. of that. You know, yeah. and more and more musicians are having to do that. I, I follow them on wherever on the internet. And sure, I feel bad for them, but sometimes, you know, in life you have to adapt. You have to go yeah. with the flow. And that's right. If you haven't banked enough money to live off of, shame on you. Yeah. If you're well, making that that much money and your overhead is that big that you can't maintain it, that you yeah. need to tour. Right. And you know, if you're new, I get it. It's different. But if you've been around for a while, then this is a great time to rest and reflect and make some great music about this time period. And keep or, in mind, guys, if you're doing online concerts, you don't have to provide insurance for the gig, for the venue. So right. like, especially bands. So you're really, your overhead is you know, whatever the webcam costs you and bandwidth and data. And that's about it. And then you mic yourself properly. Boom. You could do one a week. And you, if it's on the honor system, people who are fans actually, I find are um, pretty good about giving what money they would normally give or a little less, or at least something to, to make sure that, uh, they, they're honoring the artist. Like, uh, I love buying directly from whatever bands I love, uh, mm-hmm. this is like the synth wave stuff. If I can purchase from the artist direct, I always do fuck iTunes, fuck whatever. I want them to get as much of my money as they possibly can within, you know, uh, limitations. Uh, these days, it, and it's now only becoming easier that way because they've COVID has reduced them to this. Well, so. the opportunities are infinite for musicians right now on how they want to approach this. Mm-hmm. It's just they're held down by agents, by managers, by recording companies mm-hmm. who have them licensed in contract to agreements that yep. you know won't allow them to put out like a thirty-minute special every Friday night on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd love to see the Foo Fighters do some cover songs. I'd love to see other bands that I love that Mm -hmm. are older or have been around that I'm familiar with and have something to offer me with talent, something that will get me to tune in. So sorry for the sorry for the sort of digression, guys. But we do. It's it's I mean, it's it's uh, we have to put that in as not a disclaimer, but as an acknowledgement of we we get, you know, Simona's predicament, just like every other person who performs for a living the world all of her concerts for a year have been canceled already she knew that shortly after march the night that they closed down new york city she was supposed to be performing at the miller theater in columbia and at columbia university and they shut everything down so she and her fellow musicians continued to take over the stage and they played to an imp- okay wah, wah. we're gonna keep going like she's she's going a little over the top here that's that's right. i think where she lost a lot of people pontificating yeah empty house and they broadcast it over the radio because that's how dedicated she is to her music not only that she started a nonprofit so that she could help introduce elementary school students to interesting and and difficult music that classical music is and you should see her in a classroom with kids they absolutely light up because she's so interactive with them and she knows if you've seen simona dinnerstein perform she looks like she's halfway through a shit um she has the she doesn't really have much (laughs) stage press i know she's on a piano but fuck jerry lee lewis played piano fucking you know (laughs) george duke (laughs) billy preston played piano (laughs) little richard played piano there's certain ways to play it exactly so you can still you could still kill a room stevie wonder you could do a lot with a piano than other than look like a little like gremlin uh, you know attacking the keys (laughs) looking for dust between the keys and that's what she looks like I'm I'm thinking of photoshopping Simona Dinnerstein with a couple blind cats on top of her bosom door. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. I love it. Inside and out, what music does and how it opens people's minds. She also has a student who's an Afghan refugee. He learned and practiced piano on a keyboard written on a piece of paper. And when she took him on as a student, she found out he was living in dire straits with another Afghan refugee. And on the seventh day, she rested. (laughs) (laughs) Simone is getting fucking canonized here. Go ahead, Raven. This was her big mistake. She left the door wide open for Wiggy to make fun of her. Simona's uh, mentoring. Charity work. And I mean, he just goes off. Like he, he takes it to another dark level of scat sorry sam (laughs) but he 
he took what she said. Just remember that there's a boy playing piano on paper that right. Simona taught. Right. And then we'll, we'll go get forward. To, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. However, do you remember that one Bugs Bunny cartoon where Yosemite Sam, they're playing like a period piece and he's inherited a bunch of wealth, but he has to stop cursing. So if, every time Sam curses, yeah. he loses money. So there's a one part where he goes tumbling <laughs> over this long staircase and he's going, fuck, fuck this, fuck this. And Bugs <laughs> is looking and writing down and then writing down constantly. This is what Wiggy's doing when she's in the middle of this, uh, you know, this self, this eulogizing of fucking Simona. And so, yeah, you're right. He is taking notes and he's going to he mentally as mm -hmm. much as 79 can, and he's going to throw it all back at her in the most passive aggressive way. Bob D I want you to pay attention to every word we're going to play at this. And she just couldn't stand it. And she did something about it. She found a family that would take him in. So he would have a home. Then she realized she had ruined the life of his roommate. So she went out and she found him a family. And now he has a home that he lives in and not some squalor. Breakdown. That young man who she teaches, he's a brilliant musician. And people like him need special pianos. And one day, a man whose mother had died, who owned a piano that concert pianists can play, he called her up and he said, Simona, my mother left me this amazing piano. I would like to give it to you because I've heard you play. Okay. Yeah, Raven, I know you want to say something. <laughs> oh, man. Kill me now. It's Please. an even eclipse. I know. It's tough to get through. For the fucking 30-second rule sucks. And I love the way you sound. And she said, well, I have a piano. I don't need one. But I have a student who does. And they brought that young man, I think it was to Arizona. Simona played the piano. And then he sat down and played the piano in front. Of and that man's name was Mo Green. <laughs> and there isn't a <laughs> plaque <laughs> or a sign in that city. <laughs> this is what it's starting to sound like. <laughs> uh, of a group of people. And then Sorry, go ahead. But sorry, I, I just wanted to bring up something else. When you're doing a plug for somebody, what's the most important thing to tell people? The date, the time, the location. Yeah. Robin did none of that. No, zero she didn't. Point zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst kind of plug. <laughs> you had oh. to make people do the work to find out where, you know, what website or, you know, whatever. All you had to do is really say, look, go to Simona Dinnerstein dot hack dot org and, uh, and, uh, backslash back backslash sleep. And you'll find, you know, the concert listed <laughs> where she's going to be playing on the zoom feed or whatever fucking, or the YouTube channel. And boom, there you go. She could have gone in and out. Instead, she decided to dance around it. And yeah. uh, make it make it like a little uh, pithy thing, thereby opening the door for him to make light of her shit. And the other thing is, you're right. We've already discussed it, but I'll say it again. The time to defend your friend is in the moment, not yeah. a day later after mm -hmm. you've been read the fucking riot act. That's where you're the shithead. So in my opinion, he comes off bad, but it, it, predictable. She just comes off bad. And they told him this piano belongs to you. She's also gone to Cuba to open doors. She went to Cuba and recorded with the Cuban Symphony Orchestra and then raised the money to bring that orchestra to U the United States. Hey, Raven, how do you say banana daiquiri in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> and tour this country because she cares about the world and she cares about people. And she All just right. happens to be an incredible, stellar talent who is considered the foremost Bach interpreter of this age. So that's who you're making fun of. Fuck Simona. Go listen to Jacques Lucier instead. Go ahead, Raven. This is the woman in Robin's voice. I've been trying to get into her pants for 12 years and you're <laughs> fucking it up. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this. You think Robin's like uh, she's bi or 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 lesbian? Yeah. Um Robin cool. likes whoever likes her. So if you're good looking and you have money and fame like uh Jim Florentine or Simona, yeah, you're welcome to come on down. Uh people like Mr. X she's going to fight with and he even fought back and challenged in a lot of ways. 
Oh yeah, I loved it. Stand the test of time. <laughs> oh God, no! Even rocks, you know, if enough, if if there's enough water, hit it for a long enough time, they get worn away to shit. Um, so you couldn't gray rock. He couldn't gray rock her. I'd love to interview Mister X. I'd love to interview him with like truth serum. Let's keep going. What a speech! And by the way, did you? When you were laying in bed and couldn't sleep, did you rehearse this speech, or is this completely it spontaneous? It just kept going in my head over and over again. All yeah, go ahead. Projection. <laughs> Wiggy rehearses his speeches. He rehearses his rants. He's, oh, yeah. Um, you know, what a speech. Did you rehearse? Fantastic. You right. know, and then he's, he's going to start going... What did I do? Did I offend you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Th this is where it all becomes like, well, you can't take a joke. What's Simona? Get a thicker skin, shithead. He praises her and then he kicks out the chair from underneath. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All night. This is all I heard all night. Fantastic. Don't, boy, oh boy. Did You're you put me, me? I'm not. Uh, listen, you put me in my place. I'm a big Simona Dinnerstein fan now. I, right. I had no idea. Yes, yes, yes. Right. My goodness. Did I actually, um, do you, in your mind, somehow offend Simona? I don't even know. No offense. I don't remember yesterday's show. What exactly was the. Uh, it's like Ralph. They all do the same yeah. thing. I don't remember. I don't know. What did I do? What's your problem? It's always you. You're the problem, not me. Yeah, I'm going to make you point it out. I'm going to make you do all the work, and yep. then I'm going to make a joke of it, or I'm going to redirect, or I'm going to blame somebody else. Yeah, or I'll feign, I'll feign ignorance, or I'll feign memory loss. All of a sudden, I'm, you know, all of a sudden, <laughs> amnesia, 24-hour amnesia. Also, it, it's all in the name of art. We're doing a comedy show, so I was trying right. to do comedy. Yeah, lighten up. They're jokes, pal. Offensive uh, comment about Simona that I made. I have no recollection. Well, one of, of them, you sort of made fun of the pricing. Cat, you know, they had this tiered pricing, and you said, "Oh, these are ten dollar tickets." You called it yes. a fundraiser. That's not like, making she fun of her. Actually, play concerts and have people pay tip for tickets. No, Is no, it no. A fundraiser when when no. Eddie Van Halen gets on stage. No, no. he's holding that is a not. Listen to me. Now she's right. Like she's right about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's charity and there's charity. There's not charity. And Van Halen concerts were not charity typically. Um, and he was he was, you know, he, she's basically making fun of the fact that he was waxing poetic about Eddie Van Halen, a classically trained rock and roller. Yeah, sure. But he he was a composer. He really was a modern composer. And um, yeah, go ahead. Just these are the bullet points she was given in the talk when. Yeah. She, Simona's people reached out to her. I seriously <laughs> doubt Simona did it herself. Oh yeah, no way. Just well, she she, she claims that she did. Level. She, I think she claims that at one point I think that she she, she told her, uh, but and I think she might have given a little bit of, of of stick to Robin, but left the hard work to someone else, Either like her way, husband, her husband, right. or somebody like that. You know what I mean? It's not important who got to her at this point. It's they yeah. got to her and she has points that she has to get out. And That's right. <laughs> she's fighting the MPD machine. Yes. So and the thing is, just... and this is, and this, this is this fascinating thing. He knows that Robin, he knows everything about Robin and he knows exactly because he is the same beast, mm -hmm. just a lot worse. So it's almost like, um, <laughs> a, a nurse, an NPD Cadillac hitting an NPD Buick head on. Right. <laughs> you know what Rich. I mean? Like you're going to get that. It's going to be a mean, vicious accident, but one's going to come off worse than the other. That's For one exactly minute. Exactly what she Let do. me just, can I say something? Now, first of all, making fun of the ticket prices is not making fun of Simona Dynastine. It's making fun of the human nature, which is when you tell people they could pay $10, $20 or $50, People pay $10. That That's has nothing not to true. do with Simona. That is not enough. Head. Nope. Radiohead did that with one of their albums, and most people paid the top tier. Now, she's right about that, too. I'm not a Radiohead mm -hmm. fan, but I, I know about their uh, their history with their fans as well. And he he's gaslighting. He's telling you, you didn't hear what you fucking heard. I didn't make fun of the fact that she had tier pricing. And by the way, Van Halen also has tiered pricing. Every concert has fucking tier pricing. Yeah. Front row seats, nosebleed section. He's full of shit. He's projecting his cheap fuckiness onto <laughs> people who are going to buy yeah. just the $10. Yeah. So who comes in what 
which ass sucker is going to come on and be like, I bought tickets. I'm wonderful. And then I get, I overgave because I'm so awesome. Right. Kaplan comes in, by the way. Kaplan, and, that, Kap, Jason and Kaplan, Kaplan comes in. And is it, you, if you don't think that was not orchestrated, guys, or if that was not him saying, someone help me, I need some help here, you're out of your fucking minds. Yep. That's what makes me think that part of this is scripted. Because we have him, you know, in the wings waiting to come in and defend. So I think Robin must have gotten a hold of them and said, look, I need to come back and backtrack and rebuke, rebuke everything Howard said about my friend. And I can fill up 30 to 45 minutes of the show with this. So you just got to let me go off on Howard, get my words out, and then you guys do what you got to do. Well, do you, well, well, however much time she thinks she needed to take, um, it was, I, I, I believe that she would have told, she told him, look, I got to get this out. But then she would not have had any idea that he's going to have people trying to sandbag her or try to sway her that he's right and try to pile on. But he always needs an ad. He always needs an adversary. Yeah. Sorry. He always needs a, um, uh, like someone to help him against henchman Allison, against or... a henchman, some kind of flunky to help him someone... in any argument. He needs to put redirect the spotlight onto somebody else yes. telling us a related story that right. takes away from what he or did. To, or and to double down. He thinks, yeah, yeah, he's his his take on this is I thought I was doing something good. And now it's going to it's being turned on him. So he's just going to flip it. And like in a relay in a relay, he's going to hand off the baton to Jason and right. Jason's going to come in and be and white knight him. Oh, or, this show. Yeah, or or redirect and try to deflect, you know, away from something. And, and yeah, it's always it's 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 such cowardice when you think about it because it really should be yeah. we should be eavesdropping on a one on one conversation, but he can't have it like that. And she knows she can't talk to him off the air. So and it has to be on the air because everything he said was on the air. So it's really they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Uh, we're in about a minute left of this clip, guys. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe that. You well, have to go prove read that. it. It's online. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> now, you're angry with me, and I, I respect you for being angry with me. I mean, listen, that's your right. You can have those emotions about me. I mean, I haven't seen you this angry since I don't know when. Siegfried and Roy it was a couple of weeks ago. Right. You, you were worked up about Siegfried and Roy, and you worked <laughs> up about me. Now, I have nothing against. What was the Siegfried and Roy thing? I don't recall. They were discussing back when they were in Vegas and they went to see the show. They, I have trouble remembering, honestly. It's, it's kind of lost in my vault of memories because it was a nothing thing. It was just them remembering that back then, I think Robin didn't like the way they were treating the tigers or that how dare you put me in danger when one of those tigers could jump off the stage and attack mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. That there was a real danger there, and nobody acknowledged that. Everybody took for granted what was going on. But I'm not sure. I, I'd have to go back okay. and re-listen. Sorry. Okay, L last little bit, guys. Simona Dinnerstein, and certainly recognize that she's a concert level piece. You said, now. is she broke? Does she make a oh, living? Come on, I'm making a joke. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, you know, that's I know a joke. she's not broke. Yeah, of course. I, I wonder because if she I does could... concert music. She does classical music. It's funny to me. That's all. That's not a knock against her. Um, now, if you knew about Simona Dinnerstein, she's the foremost Bach interpreter. I happen to know that about her. Now, <laughs> you know what? If I <laughs> you know. see you. So, is, is she, she, and so she knows he's full of shit. He knows yeah. she's full of shit. And <laughs> in the wings, you got Simona Dinnerstein going, I'm friends with this fucking asshole, this, this spineless cur. Right. She's yeah. thinking, why me? Why did I pick Robin? Yeah. She's probably thinking, ah, oh, there's probably somebody else I could have picked that wouldn't have giving me all the shit now i've got to deal with this crap and i got to hear this mm -hmm. for another day because you know right. she tuned in she had yeah. to hear it. she wanted she's a narcissist if she's out there in the public like that so she yeah. wanted to hear her apology and oh my god i could just see her throwing stuff around piano books and benches yeah. Yeah. stuff just flying off the wall <laughs> busts of beethoven <laughs> okay so let's okay f four seconds and then we're on to the next clip i throw this microphone at you i've got to throw <laughs> you it might at not... my computer now, this one, uh, number two, Raven, please explain this one to me because I'm merely a 59 IQ. This is a real short clip. <laughs> so my point is that Jason 
is the weirdo, not Simona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not a knock against Simona. It's a knock against Jason. Uh, uh, well, go back and look. You were sort of, there was a sneer kind of quality oh, that I'm trying I detected. To be funny. Stop it. You should apologize that. to me. How dare you? <laughs> I don't How start. dare you? How <laughs> no. dare you? Sleep. You apologize uh, to me. Okay, so the reason why, like, so he, the, the redirection was Jason went on and he claimed that he paid $25 twice for basically one feed for him and his wife, even though, you know, you just, you would pay for, it's just, it is stupid in the, in the zoom era, right. it's about the dumbest thing you can do unless you have disposable income. Well, then it doesn't matter. You pay whatever you want, give a hundred bucks. Uh, but he paid for two of the same tickets, which everybody's got the same ticket in a zoom concert. So go ahead. Well, Jason has an argument where his wife, I think plays the cello and yeah. he supports her and her group, which is great. So he wanted to make a contribution and they were going to watch this concert, which is believable. Yeah. And I think he realized at some point, oh, I only gave 25. I look cheap. I better give another 25. Well, <laughs> or he clicked for two tickets, not thinking, not realizing. Not thinking. I, I'd say it was more likely that. Or the wife has left him and she's in a, other, a whole nother location. <laughs> Well, Jason and he did had more to pay th- for two of them. Jason did more than this. He actually kind of denigrated his wife when he said, I've been subsidizing Janice's, yeah. you know, chair, like her classical music stuff for subsidizing is it, 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 there's no ambiguity guys. You're paying for something and you're paying it. And, and when you use it in a certain context, it's, uh, I'm unwi- unwillingly, but I'm, I'm willing, but not really wanting to. Uh, subsidize this crap. I'm doing this under protest. And, uh, you know, go ahead. It's a business agreement almost. Yeah. You know, a lot of marriages have money issues. So he gets to do a certain amount of things. He gains power just like Wiggy does with his money. Mm -hmm. If you're going to subsidize people and you're going to put out money to do whatever, then you gain a certain amount of freedom. You say, Mm -hmm. I want this time to myself every night or I want this opportunity to go somewhere if we could go places. So yeah, Jason gets something out of it, but it just goes to show, you know, the (laughs) effed up lives of the staff. And you you hear Wiggy, you should apologize to me. Oh yeah. Let's not over, let's not look over, look past that one. Right. Like he flipped it on her. Completely. Yeah. And that's what I thought fascinating. Able to sleep. Well, that I do apologize for. Was just, Horrible to another friend of mine. How does she get shrapnel when you're attacking me? Well, you got a point there. But well, Robin, do you I know can't like, defend like, it. Now the the next one is called landing on a Kaplan to soften the blowjob. Um so this is just a, a little longer one. <laughs> so I'm glad so you're worried about sleep. It. You might hear anything out of me today. Oh, Can I say something? This. Yeah. Poor Howard Stern. Poor Howard Stern to start the show this week. I'm sorry, it's, Howard. This, this is, I feel, oh, feel screw bad for you Simone. and go get a $50 <laughs> ticket now. <laughs> I, I did because I bought two of them. <laughs> now, I'm going to, from now on, I will check who am I allowed to uh, goof on. I want to make sure. Well, I, I don't, don't want to on any of your friends. I don't know. Feel free. Yeah, I don't have anything. any friends. Uh, I had to stop it. But you, you, the minute he said, the minute Kaplan went on about that, which she's trying to come off as a joke, but he's not, he's not actually joking. You went like, yeah. what? Uh, <laughs> like poor Howard Stern. What? When and, did this suddenly become an attack on Howard? Right. And now, you know, it's going to go into, um, just, uh, they're going to, they're going to get pithy. They're, they're, they're just going to go back and forth. It's going to become a word war between yes. the two of them of, well, I don't make fun of your fr- you know, what friends can I make fun of? And then it's like, I don't make fun of your friends like Louis <laughs> exactly. C.K. or Matt Lauer or Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, exactly. And he actually, uh, uh, that, t- that dovetails into another clip, but we'll, we'll go through this one first. Uh, worthwhile to say about them. Are they saving the world? Do they All teach I know refugees? Is I don't know. I found a humorous way to, you know, in my mind anyway. I found a humorous way to get a little plug in for Robin's latest venture, but 
It wasn't appreciated, no, so I do apologize. I, but we uh, were going along. No we more will I talk fun. about her. Uh-uh. I was Dame Robin. I'm done. And then all of a sudden. Now, here's the thing, guys. And I'm going to. Uh, this is only like 28 seconds left. He didn't give a proper plug, first of all. So he's full of shit. And then mm-hmm. when she's arguing, she's basically saying, my friends are more noble than your friends. Yes. Like she, there, you, you could hear it in that and rewind it and listen to it for yourselves. But that's the, the crux of the matter. Your friends are pieces of shit. Mine are classically trained via p- concert pianists and they do charity work, real charity work, not saving fucking, you know, Siamese, blind Siamese cats. Go ahead. Well, Wiggy starts out with, excuse me, in my mind. So it, it's back to me. Then what does the other narcissist do to the first narcissist? She starts bringing up all the names he called her Dame Robin and yeah. other, you know, and so it, it's, it's like, you did this to me. No, you did this to me. And where's Simona lost in the weeds, Completely. nowhere to be found. Um, they bring up again about the Olive Garden and her working there. And it's like, Robin even forgot about that. She could have pinned Wiggy down on that one. Totally. Which Jason had to bring up. It just becomes, you know, another back and forth between two MPD artists. Yep, absolutely. It's like a symphony. <laughs> it's a <laughs> symphony of MPD by these two demented conductors. It was, does she make any money? Yeah, does she? It's not I don't know. business what people do. And not, not everybody does something to make money. They do it out of love. Well, look I just want to know. Jason's wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah look she, at her. She's not making. She's not making a dime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's working constantly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm subsidizing well, her classical music career. Well, Simona subsidizes herself. Thank you. So, so Janice is taking some residual shit. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Mrs. Kaplan, but you know, you get what you you get what you you get what you paid for. Number four, a passive aggressive masterclass in workplace fuckery. Now, this is an extre- extremely long clip, guys. So I gotta we gotta try to really push through it. And I will delete from the replays any mention of this concert. Um, um, that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, well, we'll see. Not, uh, I didn't ask you to say anything, no, did I? I'm gonna I am gonna delete it. You will never hear that again. Uh, Good. Because, yeah, punish me know, now. Y- yes. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I'm uh, That's not punishing I you. You don't like who, what I said. I'm gonna take I it out. Said I got to say who Simona is. All right. It's it's ironic that Robin puts that way. Punish me. Punish mm-hmm. me by taking me out of the replay. Not thinking for a minute about her friend saying, yeah, you should get rid of that because you you mocked her. Like the plug was useless after you shit and pissed all over. You stomped all over it. You pissed in the snow. Like, yeah, it you comes know, right back, back to, to Robin. Amazing. And let's not forget the ability to delete parts from the show. Sure. Like Dawn, yeah. our favorite caller. Yeah. Who got axed from the show because well someone couldn't control their response their petulant child response and Mm -hmm. wasn't happy with what they said so now because someone is someone else isn't happy with what he said what's his thing i'm taking my ball and going home i'm just going to delete it we'll never speak of this again and poor you know simona she's out there like she's getting slapped around silly in this if you look at it because Robin was trying to make him apologize, which she never really got. He he says it, but with all this other sneering and snickery going on, it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, so it's lost you, in let's it's lost in translation. Yeah, Fair it. enough. it's fine. But want to delete this too? Go ahead. But it no, I won't one. delete it. If you tell me not to, I won't. Uh, let's go to the fans who are quite upset to hear Robin all charged up this morning and not getting sleep. And Louie, go ahead. You're on in California. What's up, Howard? Hey, Robin. What a start to the you show, huh? The Robin's on a 10. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> who are you? Louie. Now, before we continue, I believe, and maybe I'm the only one, guys, I believe that a good chunk of these are real callers because... At a time like this, when there is a confrontation, which doesn't happen that often, this is why this became such a big thing in the stern, the remnants of the stern world that exist <laughs> in the in the Ethernet. Um, 
that he knew he could get a whole whack of callers that were all going to go after Robin or that were all going to go after him. And like, but mostly he could control, oh, we need an anti-Robin caller. There might be a few ringers in there, but I think for the most part, they are real callers. This right, time. he's looking for callers to side with him on this. Yes. And be like, you're out of your mind. You're going too far. You're crazy. <laughs> Howard's right. You're wrong. That's what he's looking for here. We need, we needed to call in right then there if we could have got through and said and and started with, I want to defend Howard here and go on and say, hey, fruit. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, just no kind of go. Suzazu, just do whatever, you know, where you get to fuck with him. And then all of a sudden he'd be going, I, 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 Robin, we're going to go to a, we're going to get, take a break now. So let's keep going. You're yes, nobody. Louis. Shut up, Robin, Louis. you're what? You whine. You, 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 you know, shut up, Jimmy. Louis. <laughs> you make fun of Jimmy. You make fun of everybody. Who? The first time somebody turns it around on you, you cry like a big I don't care what people say about me. I'm simply defending a friend. And who did you say I make fun of? The only reason anybody knows who Simona Diner stuff because of the Howard Stern. See, look at this. Okay, well, uh, I will admit this. I didn't know anything about her other than if I hadn't heard the show, I would never have heard of her. That's the truth, but True. whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm sure within concert, within classical music circles, I'm sure she's got some kind of name. Uh, yeah, go ahead. The, the caller does the classic thing that Howard does, which is butcher a name, which yeah. just degrades the person. Like, you don't even know enough or care enough or respect them enough to get their name right. So right. Or, just, or, or, or. You deliberately fuck up the name to debase the person. Yes. Yeah, that's that, that's an affectation. Yes, you see what you do? Now, this Look is that's the what I did. I did of that. you. I feel uh, I was doing good, but uh, I have to reconsider if Robin well, is Louis, losing yeah, sleep uh, now is making fun of her name. That's what Louie got out of it. She's a punching bag. Maryam from Brooklyn will know oh, right away oh, if uh, who was right Why or wrong. I didn't take... I did not take offense yes. In fact, I went online to buy the... Who knew that you wouldn't take offense, you fucking cackling old bit? Oh, my oh, gosh. fuck. Just Jesus Christ almighty. I mean, I wasn't exactly sure of the date because you never really said it. And I was hoping the show would put a link. But I thought it was powerful. Yeah, no link. Announced. He wasn't promoting I... it. Uh, Robin, you are so off today. You are so twisted. I'm sorry. But I was looking Look, forward to... Look, I haven't had any sleep. I told you. Well, very I, listen, that. Very bit. I, never I get attacked. Oh, Robin, you get I attacked. I <laughs> I stand behind you in every Where's way, every day. I, I feel okay, so he needs reinforcements. Every mm-hmm. time there's something against him, he needs reinforcements. What a fucking coward. I mean, I, I'm, sh- I'm flabbergasted, even though I know all this, you know, you know, the, you know, the movie, some movies you're still watching, you're still like the, the cornfield scene in Casino when they beat up Joe Pesci and his brother. That's oh still gosh. like, you know, it never, it never doesn't, it never gets, it never turns into like a G rated moment, even though you've seen it a thousand times. So, yeah. One thing about Marianne, it's not her voice that I hate as much as that she is a complete sellout. And yep. a complete pushover for this show. And she's yep. become, I said it before, I'll say it again, the squawk box. She was the first to defend him on the blackface. Yep. She was the first to defend him um, many, many times. But this oh, is yeah. another second great example where she's yeah. doing the talking. And we've even you know, seen rumors of he'll sign up again as long as he has other people to talk for him. So. Yep. As long as he has his cast of crutches and characters and puppets mm-hmm. around him, yep. he can just sit back and, and just sort of push buttons. Yep. That's why, sadly, I think we're doomed for <laughs> another contract. <laughs> Let's play it by ear. Oh, a little well, disappointed been... in this a little bit, but uh, little okay, bit. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> I think you, you took offense, and I, if, if Simone is listening, nobody ever felt that way about her. I always thought it was wonderful. I've been to events before with you, Robin, from the other foundation. Absolutely, you have. Wow. Uh, I'm going to buy a ticket because uh, my dad turned me on to Andre Bocelli and Italian music, and I love it, and I want to see this, Robin. I'm always open to stuff. The the other foundation she mentioned. Thank you for the plug, Marianne. That is, she's re- she's referencing Fifteen Foundation, of course. Um, let's continue, guys. This is a long slog. I think you 
sound really upset, and I'm sorry. And some, it was not a slam, Robin. I think you thought about it too much. And maybe I the thought people about it from so, I'm Peter's never bringing her up again. Was, I'll tell you that. If she had I'll turned on the radio. Really- so, so now he's got to threaten. Like, this yeah. isn't really, this isn't contrite, Howard. This is, well, all right, Simona, fuck you. This is the last time you get mentioned on this fucking show for as long as it lasts. Simona is persona non grata on the show now. Never yep. again. No more songs. No more cl- No more plugs. No more clips. Yep. Nothing. And you watch. After this concert happens later in November, mm-hmm. after this airs, that shortly after this airs, so there won't be a recap. There won't nope. be, oh, Robin, how was the concert with Simona? Nothing. Just nothing. dead space and, you know, on with the gay stuff. How much of a rage do you think he gets in, uh, like, behind closed doors, obviously, with Robin taking him to task at all, even in this shitty way she does it? You know, how, how, how mad do you think he gets at Robin for even daring? I think 50% of him is super mad. And yep. angry, and he's writing it down in his mental list of things yep. that she's done to piss him off. Mm-hmm. But the other fifty percent of him is thankful because it gives him free content. Content, yeah. It, and he, it's filler. It's something to fill up three to four hours of a show that he has really not much else going on. And mm-hmm. oh, it just do- it it dovetailed so bad after this for the next week. This week and the following week, which we just had, of, you know, the whole Ronnie and Ralph saga, which was just just unlistenable. Interminable, yep. And that was the first thing she heard on this show. She would have been devastated. Listen, I was upset when you you made fun of Ralph's couch yesterday and you called it a gay couch. I got very upset. Ralph, I said that to his face. uh, I got over it. He oh, was n- oh, he God insulted my curtain right back. Yeah. <laughs> I was upset about that, too. Yes. It, is this a day of apologies, Howard? Okay, so Bowie gets involved in now as well. Yep. And, and, Bowie, and Bowie, by the way, he brings up probes. I think it's, he's full of shit. I think I don't believe him at all. Uh, but you, you tell me. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> what? Uh, no, if, if I didn't day, tell you it was a day of apologies. I started this. <laughs> if I may get online, Howard, because, you know, I'd like an apology mm-hmm. as well. You know, I went to see my good friend Jeff Probst at his house to watch uh, Survivor. He's a very um, generous person. Very, He makes a lot of contributions to charity. And you made fun of him, and you hurt his feelings. You really oh. did, by the way. So I would like to know, would I, can I get an apology as well? Yes, absolutely. Uh, edit that out of the show immediately, please. <laughs> So it, it, now even, it may be true, it may not be true, but it, look at the name dropping Bowie, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> total, total star fucking move. Yeah. And Jeff Probst seems like a very easygoing guy who rolls yeah. with the punches, isn't going to yeah. take anything personally. Bowie's right. just trying to get in there to kiss ass so he can get back with Jeff, Pro- Jeff Probst, who was a celebrity super fan. We, he's been around the show for years. People yes, like has. that aren't going anywhere. There, no. there's just not been, there hasn't been an opportunity for Jeff to be on the show. Yeah. So maybe if Bowie got off his ass and started producing a segment or two, he could mm-hmm. get Jeff on the show and talk about why they're not having Survivor, which is a very current issue, and why are yeah. former contestants fighting with him on Twitter? Like, come on, everybody else, Bachelor can put a show up. Why can't Survivor? So yeah. there, there's material to be had. It's just this show does not focus on what's current. Or interesting. No. So we get but, this instead. Yep. <laughs> I'm very upset about it. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, listen, Robin. It's unbelievable. Let's go to Chris. Uh, Chris, you're on the air in New Jersey. Listen to me. What you I need to done. do is edit the first 17 minutes out of the beginning of the show and play zombie all over again and start over. <laughs> and now, listen, this, this kind of Robin has to bring these things up because... Listen, we we have a very close relationship. She feels comfortable enough to bring it up to me. You have to sit of through. Of course, she should. She feels comfortable enough to bring it up to me. That's very telling. The language he uses. Go ahead. He also says you have to sit through it. <laughs> you have to sit and take your punishment and be a punching bag. <laughs> take your lumps. <laughs> but what what you should do is just start the show over again because it's ridiculous. All right. This and do you know why I think that's high pitch? I think that was high pitch, Eric. Wow. Do you want to hear it again? 
Just a little, yeah. Just a little bit. Okay, I'll play it right back. I think that's High Pitch's real voice. We're going to replay that little bit, Chris from New Jersey. Uh, I'm I'm almost convinced it's High Pitch Eric. So listen carefully with that in mind, guys. You're on the air in New Jersey. Listen to me. What you I need to done. do is edit the first 17 minutes out of the beginning of the show and play zombie all over again and start over. <laughs> yeah, no, listen. This this kind of Robin has to bring these things up because uh, listen, we we have a very close relationship. She feels comfortable enough to bring it up to me. No. No, I'm thinking if he had a voice modulator, yes. Because, like the the cadence is wrong. It's very fast. It's very like. Um, it's only it's a lot quicker than Eric Hypocheric would be, but the the whole thing is I've 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 thought for years Hypocheric is just it's just to put on that high pitch Clowning, voice. yeah, yeah. It, the tone the tone is a little off too. I've heard his deep voice when he okay. gets like scared or something. I it's it's a great idea that I just don't know. I'll just play the rest of it. You have to sit of through. Of course, you should. But what what you should do is just start the show over again because it's ridiculous. All right, this guy says it's ridiculous, Robin. I don't think your feelings are might be wrong. But it just said that last. It was really the last sentence that really got me because it sounded the way he the way he sort of has mayo in his voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it just it sounded a little hypogeric. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's continue. Back <laughs> to your hole, whoever you are. All right, let's go to Chris in Ohio. It's getting to be re- goddamn yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Um, I think you know Robin used to say on the online that you know this she was uh, this is an act, but I've never felt so uncomfortable in my life after listening to that speech. That was uncomfortable, Robin. I love you, but Jesus Christ! Wow. I wasn't uncomfortable when I heard it. I just thought, like, it's funny how you listen differently now after the stuff we've been doing and after right. you know enough years have passed. So, let's continue. Life can be uncomfortable. There you, you go, think Robin. I'm uncomfortable? Robin was very uncomfortable. I've decided, based on what Robin said, I'm editing out the first 45 years of this show. <laughs> now, that's it. <laughs> Let's go to Melvin. Melvin. Chris says he's uncomfortable. Melvin, what do you say? And a break before we get into Melvin, who may or may not be a real caller, guys. Boy, I, I tell you, in the year of 2020, it's the year of hypocrisy. You should join the Trump campaign because you are so hypocritical, Robin. You jump on and cackle at everybody that the show falls into. The minute it's about something that touches your life, it's a problem. It's not about me. It was simply about her and her hard work and her career. And I just but didn't it touches, want it trivialized. It so- yeah, go ahead. That's some angry back staff right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I seriously think that they're just like, how dare she? She, even someone like Jason, who's been around since the Fifteen Foundation saga, yep, yep, who Girls Night Out. had to cough up money when he couldn't afford it. People Absolutely. like Will, they are going to hear these callers and they are going to put them right through if they're real yeah. and if they're not, they're writing up scripts, they're banging them out the night before yep. for these people yep. because they know what's happening, what's coming up. Yep, it's all it's all uh, being prepared for the war. Sorry. It touches you. It touches your life, and all of a sudden, it's an issue. But you can, you, you somebody else that calls. I'm so glad his uh, connection is bad. <laughs> well, you know, uh, honestly, from uh, my point of view, and I do apologize to Robin if she couldn't get any sleep, and and if I've upset her. But if, I, I apologize if I've upset her if she couldn't get any sleep, guys. That's key. You know. Yep. I must tell yep. you that um, my desire, if anyway, was to you know look. I don't know how many classical musicians get um, a plug here and there, and I try to bring it up in a way that's interesting so that the audience will be engaged with it. And I thought, well, maybe some people will buy some tickets if they hear. You didn't just hear me shit all over Simona Dinnerstein and classical music and classical concerts and her fucking ticket price tearing being so cheap. She's low rent. Does she have a house? Is she working at the Olive Garden? You didn't hear that yesterday, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, Raven. I'm I'm very much in tune with the English language and proper use of it. So mm-hmm. when I hear him using run on sentences that are like just conjunction chalked full of <laughs> if then and from to for, but there's, there's no verbs there. It's all like just non sequiturs or yeah. uh, sentence fragments run. on. It's just a complete run on sentence. sentence. I hate yeah. them. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's also, it's his MPD. He, 
Yes, but is yeah the see the stam like the not the stammering but the uh, yeah the run on sentences the point like he he doesn't have a point but he's getting there in a hurry he's trying to get there as slow as possible but he's not actually going anywhere. <laughs> We're hearing his true stream of consciousness that goes yes. on in his head, him right. trying to form a thought at a seventy nine IQ, and he's going up like an eighty nine IQ with Blobbin. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, the rest of us listeners are like 120 to 140, and we're nitpicking yeah. things on the show, and we have a memory of stuff that he can't remember, but we can. So here we are, and there they well, are. And, and, and this is the money they, you know, oh, gosh, don't get he, me started. He, he has a memory, but it's selective. And I believe that's the one thing his that is not um, affected by anything, because he absolutely remembers slights against him. He does mm-hmm. not remember insults he gives people uh, well actually no he he would actually I, I'm, I'm of two minds when we did the ellen reshinding he explained how he had to when on the phone with her he had to you know basically say i'm sorry but he was called on it so it would have been i'm sure it was like when uh, gail king called him on this <laughs> it, it, she met him and he said uh you know i said a lot of things da, 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 da. he's like i have to i don't remember it i believe he doesn't remember it but <laughs> but right. at the same time Um, he has to admit to having done it when he's confronted because it's most likely true. Like he can't, there's someone that could dig up the audio. He can't deny it really. So about it on the show and maybe make it sound a little bit exciting and fun and whatever, even if people just want to tune in to see what's going on. And so, you know, my, my effort was to kind of, uh, put a little spotlight on it. And I, I always think I'm helping rather than knocking Mona. Everyone knows classical music. Either you're into it or you're not. I don't happen to be into it. But I wasn't knocking her accomplishment. I don't, I, anyone who can play the piano. I don't. So this is what more bullshit gaslighting. Yeah, go ahead. Drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time he outright lies. Yeah, oh God. I have a game. That's it. Yeah, the the lying game. Yeah, drink. Jesus, you'd be you fucked up inside a note. Well, today you wouldn't because the Robin had eight minutes <laughs> solid, so uh, but right. it would take a little longer than normal. You'd be drunk by six fifteen instead of six six oh one. You play chop- seven oh one. Sorry, chopsticks. I'm an envious because I can't play. But uh, you know, uh, you know, this is uh, my attempt to be funny, but at the same time get people interested in something. So that's uh, that's what I do. Uh, 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 that's a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to highlight, uh, the one thing he did say he was jealous of somebody who's classically trained. I believe that. I believe he is jealous of people who can play. Of course. He, he loves, he wishes he had some kind of real talent. Right. But it's yeah. just this Tom fuckery. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, listen, I'm always promoting Simona cause it's Robin's friend. I don't know Simona. I do it for Robin, not for Simona. Uh, if you remember, uh, one time I played this on the air. It was a little fake promo about Robin and her friendship with Simona. Let me see if I can find it real fast. Here. Now, this wasn't meant to knock Simona. It was meant to, you know, give this musician a, a plug. Every time you hear these, yeah, you know, uh, you know, you know, it's all, mm-hmm. these are all breaks in, um, well, breaks in truth, first of all. They're, they're all the tells of, uh, you know, a, a cop, a, a seasoned like interrogator would tell you he's full of shit. He's completely full of shit. Cause Wheels the truth should not be, the truth should not be so hard coming out of your mouth. It should be, it should become, it should fly right out of you. If you're being honest. Yeah. If you're sincere, your words will flow without any hitches, but he has such a problem getting out a full <laughs> sentence during this. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of liked it. Yeah. So here's the, uh, the bit that he created. Live at Madison Square Garden, Robin quivers with her best classical pianist friend, Simona Dinnerstein. Two musical legends, one magical night. Closing out the night with See, a... It's a... It's humorous without... Uh, it's not exactly, uh, uh, you know... <laughs> humorous. <laughs> you sure you got it? It's humorous. Mark your cards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drop your H's and mark your cards, guys. Showing right. off some talents, but it's a way to get the name out there. 
Now, and I, uh, again, I told you up until yesterday, I always felt that way. Yeah. And I explained it to her that way. But I just thought yesterday it got a little too close to Simone hmm. criticism. Wow. Uh, no, you didn't. People, you had to be told it was criticism, you fucking idiot. It, he thought, he. I'm sure he had no clue this was coming at him whenever they approached him the night before or the day of in their morning meeting or prior to that. So but he knew if, that he kind of owed it to Robin and he could fill up time and he knows that he can just spin stuff around on someone. So on the scales of justice, who's the bigger pile of shit in the situation, him or her? We expect this from him, but she's the one that has to be, you know, she's holding, okay, she's by, you know, she's got a gun to her head trying yeah. to get force an apology out of him. But and the whole point is you shouldn't have to be told to say thank you. You shouldn't have to be told to defend someone. You shouldn't have to be told, you know, in the moment after the fact that you were wrong. So who would you, if you had to give like a number, who's the asshole here? We're the real asshole. Okay. From one to 10, I'm going to say Wiggy's like a nine and a half. Okay. And I'm going to give Robin like an eight. Okay. That's fair. I think, I think she really worked hard at defending Simona and herself. And I think Wiggy just kept his baseline of bullshit asshole, which Mm -hmm. is a 9.5. You know, some days it could be a 10 if he's really going, but it's, it's just so ridiculous and so painful. Yeah. Cause we, we know their dance steps. Yes. Yes. And they know their dance steps. That's, that's the funny, that's, we've seen this movie. We've, they've started in it. <laughs> okay. One sec. Let me just put this together. All right. Well, I hear you. I'm going to uh, k- take that in, uh, into consideration and uh, think about it. Yes, Phil. Uh, yeah, I'd like you to notify Siri, so I'm canceling my subscription. When you, Howard, when you make fun of Simona Dinnerstein, that's enough. You can go ahead and make fun of anyone. When you make fun of her, cross the line. Phil says now. he's leaving the show if I don't yeah, make fun good. of Simona Dinnerstein. Ask and children. Cancel. Ask and children, Howard. I know. Ask? Back off his caller. No location mm-hmm. given. Right away, got to got to have one on Robin's side. So you you do that token. You put him on, fake it, whatever, and then go. Let's continue. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did, you, did you did you want it? No? Okay. No, no, it's not worth it. Okay. Her. And children. Yes. That was part of your uh, rap this morning. I said about the she, she has a student who is an Afghan refugee. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that, I got to tell you, that's fantastic. How do you not know that? I, I didn't know that. Now I know. Now I know. I, had right. I known that, Thank I probably you. would have opened the show differently yesterday. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jim Meyer is on the phone who runs this company. He's the- this is the second or third time he's had this fake Jim Meyer impression, which we don't even know what the fuck a real Jim Meyer. An impression's only good when you know what the person really sounds like, shithead. <laughs> Go ahead, David. This, this was like the second. We had a third this week and uh, with the ro- around the Ronnie and Ralph thing. But uh-huh. usually once a week he makes an appearance and he's always super angry. Yeah. And brings up contract season. <laughs> Oh yeah, and Spotify, which is still like Spotify, it's, it's yeah. still it's still a dingleberry in Wiggy's ass that he cannot uh-huh. get a, a deal the deal that he wants. The head of Sirius XM, and he is upset. Yes, Jim. Are you out of your damn mind, Quivers? It's contract <laughs> season. This is exactly what Spotify wants. Daniel Ek wants to divide <laughs> and conquer. Fuck, 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 fuck. All right, Jim. Upset. Everyone's upset. King of All Black says he agrees with you, Robin. Uh, so, and I, but this is the thing, like, King of All Black, this is, usually I can't stand his calls, but I think, I like him in this one. I, I'm i trying to remember what he said here. I think he defends Robin. He does. He's he's the number two behind Marianne for Squawk Boxes of yes. voices that speak for him. So right. as soon as Marianne's done, you can always count on King of All Blacks, then maybe a Bobo. Yep. And... Uh, Jim Meyer or some of these other people. Let's hear what he says. Okay. Yes, oh, King. No, I must be wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you better go back to sleep. Yes, King. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, the weird thing is when you were doing that yesterday, I, I really didn't think nothing of it at first. <clears throat> and as it went on, I said, damn, 
he's just like he's dissing Robin in a weird way, and I and I felt it. Yeah, I did. Well, I mean, anybody with a brain would have felt it. Yeah. But uh, and this is this is where I think Robin goes full on Simona. Who <laughs> like it's all about me. So here we go. When you was doing it, I have to agree with Robin. And All right. Well, listen, I, that wasn't my intention, Robin. I do apologize. I never mean to diss you. I was. You can I mean, diss I, me all you want. I, I don't well, have maybe a problem that was with it. that. I'm here to speak up for myself. Well, yeah, but I thought you. I took it like. I, took it like, I do um, think he has some kind of uh, message he's trying to get to me. I don't know what it is. He won't come out and yes. actually say. Isn't that amazing? Like this is this is Robin mm-hmm. again pointing out that Wiggy doesn't do anything off the air. It's got to be on the air, or she will not talk to her. He's basically betraying the fact that they have no communication. She's right away saying, "I don't know what he's trying to say. I don't, you know, she um, or was she talking to King of All Blacks at that point? Well, about... she's 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 talking to King of All Blacks, but about Howard. Yeah, it's. It's very clear that anything you're going to say between these two is going to be on the air. Right. There's go between people that yep. she'll bring up topics and he'll approve or disprove. So, mm-hmm. yep. That's yes. what, what's well, I'll tell you what it is. Go ahead. I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> tell me because I don't even see, know. What it, <laughs> see, what it is is if, like, say if Gary or, or one of them writes a book or promotes something. You you joke about it and stuff like that, which is you know it's funny, but it's it kind of awkward too when you hear it. But it's funny, but now you're lumping Robin into it, like you know what I, I mean. See. Like she's so you feel it was more Robin. about me with Robin as opposed to me making fun of Simona Dinnerstein. Cause- well, the the if you want to bring it to like a parallel, guys, when Bowie was doing his book promotion in 2010, Wiggy couldn't stop shitting all over it. He shit on the promotion. He shit on the book, the internal, like the the inside part. He shit on, you know, enough of it. I've had enough of it because it's not about him for like five minutes. It's about Bowie. And the book was such fluff. I would have just let him do the promotion. And and he didn't see it that way. He saw it as it's attention being taken away from me. How dare you put a list in your book of music (laughs) songs you take to an island? Right. What about the top 10 things we've talked about, you know, or right. the top 10 right. ways I've bashed you right. relentlessly in your history? Yeah, but not only that, but just who are you to release a book? Who are you? Like, you know, you know it's, it's, it's uh, the, the audacity to think you have a book in you, much less to get it published and released and then go on a promotion as if you're some kind of author? How dare mm-hmm. you? So you have to I- like... Yeah, so at that point, if 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 Gary wasn't going to basically tell him behind the scenes, look, fuck off. I didn't mention you in this fucking book except for, like, sparingly, like, you know, just to say that I worked on the show. We didn't divulge anything. I told boring stories except for, you know, his family stuff, which might be of interest to people. But you couldn't even let me have this. You couldn't let me just fucking do this yeah. and not see it as a feather in your cap of someone on your show helping promote your show by doing all these gigs. I mean, it really is about Howard at the end, but... He didn't see it that way. No, because Howard believes everything that they get is because of him. Yes. Every offer, every book, every appearance, every Jeff Probst visit to their house, every Mm -hmm. star fucking event they get VIP backstage passes to is Mm -hmm. because of him. And there's Mm -hmm. a great quote that was in this week's shows we'll get to next time. But it basically comes down to he built their houses. He Mm -hmm. built their lives their mm-hmm. lifestyles. Mm-hmm. So when you hear the things like this going on, it's like, how dare you? Yeah. I'm, I'm your Messiah. We've had this in the last show we did where mm-hmm. it was like, I'm the Messiah. I am everything to you guys. I've given mm-hmm. you life. I've given you food. I've given you shelter. You mm-hmm. bow down to me. How yeah. dare you go out on your own and try and do anything or support somebody else. You support me, motherfucker. That's what he's do, thinking. Do you remember the rant with the uh, I prank no one else? And he said, it's yes. my life. And when, it's t- when you're out of my life, it's torture. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like this is when you're, you're, you're in my world. And when you get thrown out of my world, it's torture for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's torture in that world. Shithead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's, okay. let's, let's not even fuck around. 
I didn't think I made fun of Simona yeah, Dynasty. And I, I was having a little fun no, with the didn't. event. I love when Robin is yes, part of these things. Gave it, you should have gave it more respect because it was I coming see. from Robin. All right, that's fair enough. I get it. All right, Robin, I hear you. You're my friend. I had that. Uh... <laughs> that sound is so good. Co- he sounds so convincing. <laughs> you're, you're my friend. You're my past friend. The, past the past the oregano. <laughs> I mean that affectation with the, the amount of energy that went into that is just astounding. Imagine like a a wedding video where someone said that. Yeah, so uh, here's to the bride and groom. Pass Cheers, the almond. Cheers, guys. <laughs> right. All right. I am so sorry to have <laughs> cost you sleep, my poor Robin. Yes, Nicole. Nicole in New Jersey. Robin. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to support Robin. I feel like she takes a lot of stuff on the show, and she's always such a good sport about it. I mean, the crazy stuff you say to her, and she just never bats an eye. She just rolls with it. And I love her, and I think she's the best, and she never gets upset like this. So it's... So real caller or fake caller? To me, I'm kind of... This one's, this one's not too bad if it, is a, if it is a fake caller. It sounds legit. I'll say fa- uh, real on this one. Nicole sounds yeah. real. I don't know if we got a city, but she yeah, yeah she did. New Jer- they said New Jersey quality. <laughs> Everybody's calling from New Jersey. I guess <laughs> I was not getting not allowed to get through or <laughs> Nebraska. She's upset. I think we should all be fine with it. And she's such she's so articulate. Um, That's right. That's right. Taking you guys down, I was impressed. I thought Listen. it was amazing. Robin is a lot smarter than me. If she's upset, she's probably seeing something I don't. But uh, I just can't yeah. see it. You know, I yeah. thought I was doing good. But uh, all right, Robin, I, I hear what you're saying. And I, uh, yeah, just like the bro fight. I thought I was helping a bro out, right? Mm-hmm. Like this, this is the after the, well, it's just like Bob D. I, I hope you're fucking getting, <laughs> I hope you got your, your Taking loose notes. leaf. At, yeah, loose leaf in your big four four ink pen, <laughs> draining every one of those motherfuckers. All right, let's go. Do respect you, and certainly respect your intelligence. So I, I'm just a little slow on the uptake. I'm not uh, fully getting it, but I'm going to think about it, and then I will get it. Now uh, we love you, Robin. Yes, Thank Robin, you. we love you. We all love you, and we but even I don't know about you, but I do I love you. Stop. Stop it. You're being uh, you're being wrong about that. That is not fair. You don't know I'm what I love. I'm only teasing you now. All right. Wow. Passive aggressive <laughs> alert. Yeah. I lo- actually, this l- I love it when they would. So it's it, it actually is perfect timing, guys. I'm, Robin, I'm sure, had no plan on <laughs> doing this. Uh, well, we know she didn't until she got confronted by, you know, the Simona Dinnerstein enforcers. But um, the 15 Foundation is equally uh, fascinating the way they kind of spar with each other in the way he digs at her and she digs at him throughout the whole thing because Mm -hmm. he's fed up with the fucking charity shit she hates the fact that he's doing this wedding stuff with beth and uh there's no involvement and uh it's just it's just amazing how this cycles back again and again it's like circular (laughs) circular saw passive aggressive fuckery well there you go some of the listeners think robin you were wrong (laughs) i think you're right and so does king of all blacks (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so there you go. And to Simona, wherever you are, I do respect your talent and intelligence. I wish I could play piano like you do. I'm jealous. Maybe that's what's behind it. I'm secretly jealous of Simona Dinnerstein and her awesome talent. You could it, it's, it's, it's pure sarcasm dripping out. There's nothing he can convince you of these days. Not when you've been listening like way we have. Yeah. Okay, so he starts off with, I respect you. Okay, that's a lie. But then he goes, I'm jealous of your talent. So that's a truth. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's dripping in sarcasm and uh, duty, obligation to apologize officially to Simona. And that's what we're getting at the very end. (laughs) Which always sounds convincing when you're when you got a gun to your head and you have to <laughs> apologize for the Selena thing. <laughs> His reading in Spanish, he was just like Les Le- Les Nesman saying "Chai Chai Rodriguez." What do I do? <laughs> I just talk into the fucking microphone. Any idiot can do that. Any moron with a microphone can do what I do. That is not true. Well, it's true. Now stop it, no. Robin. You know it's true. You just don't want to say it. 
Go ahead. No, Let me have no, it. No, 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 no. I would never yeah. say that. You invented what you do, and nobody else can do it. Oh, fuck off. And now he's making it about him. He's turning it around, self bullshit, self-deprecating to try to make himself the victim. And <laughs> she tried to do it herself when she said Beth would throw a party once he died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just go back she and has- listen to the clips, guys. She has to wrap it up all nicey-nice to earn yeah. her money and earn her yeah. keep. But yeah. ultimately, she got in what she wanted already. So anything right. just, else is just smoothing out the edges. That's right. Just like the King of All Black said, you know, I think you're being uh, offensive. And uh, well, it's just funny. You know, I know you don't mean it, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's, uh, Robin. And I was like, dude, fuck off. OK, you earned your keep, too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you can't. You're right. You have to wrap everything in a bow for him, no matter what it is. Jesus. All right. Right. Listen. And you make a point. If I'm praising Eddie Van Halen, why not Simona Dinnerstein? She's worked just as hard as Eddie has and gotten to the same level. You make a good point. You know, so, his middle name is Ludwig, and he named Ludwig, it the yeah. Wolfgang. It That's wasn't just right. because they sound good. He's a Beethoven. He was a Beethoven fan. And, and fans of our show, listen, what is my accomplishment? I host penis contests. <laughs> this is where he starts getting gay. Oh, it's going bad now. <laughs> Ass end up. Go ahead. Okay, my ears are burning because he keeps saying, listen. Like, yeah. it's a cue. Like, um, when they hypnotize people or if you're <laughs> doing a, um, like, a, oh, okay, bear with me. The um, MLK, MK uh, yeah. programming. Okay. okay. They have Q words. And one yep. of his is he does, if you're in with him, he'll do these hand motions. I'm doing them to film where you guys can't see them. But he'll yeah. like flash his hands at you and he'll use a keyword. It's almost right. like you're being hypnotized by somebody. And then you're programmed to be brainwashed by what they oh. say. So okay. when he says, listen, get ready for a big old fat lie or some sort of way to derail, turn the conversation or make it all about him. Mm-hmm. And it's like uh, T.J. Mackey in Magnolia. <laughs> one, one deleted scene where the girl calls me and goes, this is one of those techniques to get her, you know, get her to sleep with you. I know what you did, Janet. <laughs> Thanks up on her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Passive aggressive fucking <laughs> nth degree black belt. That's what I did yesterday. That was well, a Simona... great contest, and I wish I could have gone to sleep thinking about it. And right. Well, <laughs> you're right. Simona Dinnerstein was practicing piano while I was looking at guys' cocks. <laughs> and I... <sighs> Here we go There's with the sense. devaluation. <laughs> Bob yeah. D, thank you for teaching me the word devaluation. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we you you know what the word you knew what the word before, but not in a certain context. How well, not in this context? I didn't. No, exactly. I have to tell you. You know, uh, you know, how could I, who am I to make fun of that? Think about it. I was walking around all proud of myself. My chest puffed up yesterday. All the fans were writing about the big cock contest. And I went, boy, am I a talent. I (laughs) hosted that penis contest and the whole world was with me. But, you know, when you compare it to someone who can play the concert, yeah, it's just breaking it up, guys, to get that 30 seconds in the last 30 seconds. But before then, uh, Raven, yeah. So where does Wiggy get off being all chest puffed out on how great his show is? Where is this gesture of grandness that he gets from the show? Do you think the staff is writing him after each show to congratulate him on the greatest show ever? <sighs> I don't know how this goes in terms of NPD. Like, do you, is, is he in front of a mirror going, you know, you're the greatest, you're the greatest running back of all time. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Or is it, is it, is he sense stuff in, in, is this is what you're trying to ask? I don't know where he gets it from. Does he have to do it himself? He seems so lazy. It would be, have to be like, he has Twitter. He's got someone deleting tweets or, selecting emails to send him at, that are just completely fake. And there yeah. are people like, I can believe Mercy has people on the staff writing fake emails and different having like accounts. different accounts and tell them this and send them to him just to puff him up. Yeah. They turn off the comments on any clips from the show. Yeah. So 
no one can get in any comments, even if they're off topic, forget it, unless you're uh, followed back by the show. Just as a, so, just as an aside, guys, curious. in our, in our Facebook group, I posted a video by, um, Patrick, uh, Ben Victor, who's got, uh, he's got a show value tainment, I think is the, uh, website on YouTube. And he's got all these mob interviews that he's done that are fantastic. He's really puts an amazing, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't generally plug people, but he does such an amazing job on his content, um, online, especially. And, uh, he posted a thing about Howard's contract, like the bullshit talk about all the 120 million this from two weeks ago, three weeks ago at this point. And I just look, cause this is a neutral, this is a site about way, like has nothing to do with Howard generally. And you look through the comments, 95% of the comments were negative about Howard 95. And he has about two point something million followers uh, uh, on, on YouTube. Wow. Okay. That says it all. That's right. <laughs> Like this is a neutral, like this is a, 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 not a topic he deals with and all of a sudden, but he, he, you know, he deals with interviews mostly like media interviews. Uh, he did a great one with, uh, Sammy, the bull Gravano, which guys I totally recommend, although it kind of repeats Sammy, the bull's first book. Um, but either way for that to happen, gives you a cross section. This is okay. Is it a crowd that would normally hate Howard? I don't think so. It's all disgruntled people saying he's not worth it. He sold out all this crap. So check it out for yourself in the comments. It's really fascinating. So, um, you know, if, if that's the case in a random neutral fucking video, what do you think the actual stern emails yeah. sent look like and read like, it must, it must be, it must be like he's in the fetal position. If he actually had to hear that <laughs> criticism. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Cause there's only 30 seconds of this clip and then we can push forward to piano on that level. Who the fuck am I? walking around with my, I should be ashamed. I should be in a closet somewhere with, in the dark. Nobody's saying that. I'm but saying they it. for everything. What have I done? Who have I helped from Shame. Afghanistan? Nobody. Shame. No one. Robin, Shame. you brought me right back down to earth. Thank you. <laughs> I was a little puffed up from yesterday's show. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Thinking that I was something. If you're Simona Dinnerstein and you hear this show horse shit, what's your response to Robin? My response to Robin would have to be, thank you for trying, but I think I'm done working with you on this show. Mm -hmm. I'll see you at the concert because she's hosting this concert for her. Mm -hmm. So she has to introduce her, right. give her whatever credentials and mm -hmm. do, you know, just mm -hmm. internet stuff. Mm -hmm. But overall... Simona's taken a step back from her. She wants to be backed off of the show. She's yep. got to find, she's quickly going through her contact book, looking for friends. Who's the next person she's going to grift onto? <laughs> I think you're right. Not even her, but maybe her PR person, her agent, whatever she's got working for her at this point. Or she's, or she's going to start grifting a new person. Well, you, I don't know. That might be something worth following, but... I yeah. just wanted to bring up something. I know this is our last clip, and we didn't. Well, not we didn't last. Need but to hear it. <laughs> it's near. It's right at the end of all this Simona stuff. It's yeah. There's only a couple of little small ones. Yep. So, remember, Simona. Robin talked about Simona teaching an Afghani boy to play piano on mm -hmm. paper. Okay. So, what does Riggy, Riggy, <laughs> what does Wiggy <laughs> retort with? He says he helped a boy play with duty drumsticks yes. shit sticks yeah. and taught him the drums that was his whole bit for a good five minutes yes i didn't i, I mean, deliberately i deliberately left that one out because it was just i'm glad you did i didn't need to yeah. hear that again god yeah i got enough ptsd from the show <laughs> yeah. i just need to express to people like this is the level of dark humor of scat of satan and child sacrifice that yeah. he goes to that's how deep and dark he is that he goes right. to defend himself. If it's not cock related, dick, scrotum, ropey load, right. Uh, all the above. So, mm -hmm. so, and, and this is in the, in the, in this, in the, uh, the, 
category of apologizing. This is how he apologizes. <laughs> yeah. Like this is all the context of low. Well, let me, let me step back and evaluate myself. What have I done? This fake, like uh, self-deprecating bullshit. Anyway, I, you know, I, you never buy it. Robin doesn't buy it. Simone is, if she's any, if she's any brains in her whatsoever, she won't buy it. She'll know he exactly what an asshole he is anyway. So number five, Pat Wiggy crossing Robin's name out of the will. <laughs> Robin, do you know who you work for? You know how many people on the staff he has just completely ripped apart? How many of them do you think went home and didn't sleep at night because of something Howard said? No, wow, Howard's making two. Me apart. I it. didn't say anything about Howard ripping me apart. But if he, he ripped concerned. his wives apart, they might have a problem, don't you think? Yes. Yes, Rob. Possibly. Someone- he knows that. She's right. And he doesn't mm-hmm. care. That's what you're hearing in his voice. It's, yeah. He says, um, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what? Next caller. So end. Exactly. No, 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 something to them. I They're not here to so... defend themselves. They don't deserve to be brought into it. Jim, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, now, uh, Robin, I think this is more about you communicating to Simona than to Howard. You're telling her, yeah. I have your back. You know, they're not going to make fun of you anymore. They're just going to. Uh, oh, I'm never uh, talking about this you. again. Uh, you can be sure of that. I'm off this subject. I've got other subjects, not this one. Uh, but I'm not talking well, about Simona. So you you can hear him that that kind of little that th- there's the where the aggression comes in. Oh, mm-hmm. you'd be better better believe it. Fuck this Simona. Fuck her and fuck Robin if she ever tries to fucking crowbar her in my show again. Right. I am done with these two bitches. Yep. Fuck them. Yep. <laughs> so number- God damn it! I'm not helping anybody else ever again. I'm taking number my ball and going home. <laughs> number six, Robin gives him a last chance to come clean. Uh, I hope so. I hope there's yeah. no hard feelings. You want to no. say something to me? Please get no. it out now. Oh, yeah, I, got to to <laughs> I, got, I got plenty to say to you. What? I got plenty to say to you. No, uh, yes, I understand. Oh, uh, please, you got down. Yeah, I, get I more, think uh, I need to take more a break so I can get a hold of President Trump. Okay, we, we did. He'll be thankful I cut that where I did, guys. But you heard him. I got plenty to say to you off the air. Mm-hmm. Like, I got plenty to say to you, but he won't. No, never. Yeah, yeah. It's so a, that's. It's an idle threat just right. sitting there. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you fucked up, bitch. You're done. <laughs> okay. The first one here, clip, the next clip, guys, we're going to take you into, um, we're still, we're still in the 21st, Matthew McConaughey, the interrogation of Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey <laughs> a.k.a. Woody Boyd, begins. Hey, Matthew, good to see you. There he is. Let me take a good look at this guy. There's a movie star. Look at that. Look hey, look hey at that. how are you? How are you doing? I'm not relatively good, man. Look at you. Ew. How are you excited. Looking? You're it's been quite a few good. years since, been, since we've done this. It's good to be back with you. <laughs> Okay, so Why? again, these, these uh, exactly. So we're the next one is called guys. I get, let me get this fully extended because I can't. Uh, okay, saber dance time, boys and girls. Plus, <laughs> Schopenhauer was completely full of shit. So I'm gonna get my thing clipped just so. And this is gonna be tough because I've got to negotiate around the Skype. Okay, so ready and action. You have written Thank things you. here that I'm busy psychoanalyzing you. You know, I was thinking about this. When you won the Oscar, you know, when, when, which is a big deal. You know, you, you, you win this Oscar and you get up there and during your speech, and it was an eloquent speech, but you thanked your parents. And you, you acknowledge your father who is now, in, you know, up in the sky somewhere, up in heaven. You know, he's looking down on you. And I thought, wow, Matthew must have had this incredible relationship with his... <laughs> okay, break time. 30 what? seconds. Let's continue. ...father to honor him at the Oscars like that. But the disconnect for me is when I read the book, Matthew, your father, I, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say he boarded on abuse. He abused you. No. There were fist fight. Well, come on. But let, let's analyze. Have you ever been in analysis? Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me turn it down. <laughs> Aram Gadgeturian. Hold on. <laughs> turn that down. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, I'm sorry. But this is a little self-indulgent, I know. But we don't do it that often. So he's desperate in this interview, the first 20 minutes to crowbar because the, the yeah. abuse into what ba- he basically skimmed through the book that McConaughey is pl- plugging. Uh, which is, I guess, an, an autobiography or 
affirmation book. I don't know his, his upbringing, you know, maybe part one of his life. I have no idea. And he's desperate to crowbar some narrative where he feels that his life was abuse, but he con- consistently gray rocks, um, Wiggy and said, no, <laughs> yeah. it, it was, there was love. Like love was the predominant thing. And he actually right. sounded very likable. It did sound, yes, um, a, a bit too rough around the edges as an upbringing, as far as they go, but also he's of that generation where that would possibly be more normal. Do you know what I mean? Right. McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey is 50 years old. Yes. So he is from a generation of tough love parents. Yes. Okay. My mom had a belt. All right. She had wood spoons. She had whatever. (laughs) Yeah. His dad had a mean right hook, a good slap. And, you know, he used it on the wife, the kids, but ultimately it was to teach them rules of respect, love that, you know, some real high vibration basics. It's just the way he went about it was rough around the edges. Like you said, right. Matthew McConaughey comes off very likable. It's, the material that Wiggy chose to interview him with. Right. Anybody who wants to hear a real good Matthew McConaughey interview, listen to the Joe Rogan interview he did. And it's a total different interview. You're, you're actually not bored. The therapy thing never came up Mm -hmm. and a lot of fun stories or a lot of it was promoting, uh, Austin, Texas, which he is, uh, native, not native. He lives in, Mm-hmm. And I get it. Austin's an up and coming city. Great. Okay. So there, there was so much more to enjoy. And that was like a two hour interview versus this, which was, well, uh, I think, oh, I wrote it. Hold on. <laughs> one out, one hour, 47, something like that. Like Thank roughly you. the same, roughly the same length, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. We had over an hour and a half. So yeah. it was so- torture for us. Um, Right. And this isn't, this isn't us like espousing Joe Rogan as some kind of Dick Cavett of his generation. It's just that he listens to his guests and he is, he is a meathead. I will give you that. And there's some interviews where Joe Rogan is incredibly infuriating, but he knows, he knows how to interview people. And we, right. he at the very least knows how to listen. And anybody who can do that, like Bennington does, does a great job. The Rich Eisen show, you only see clips of it on YouTube. He's a fantastic interviewer. Bob Costas was a great interviewer. Um, I said before, Brian Linehan, rest in peace, was a fantastic fucking interviewer because they knew what the subject matter, they knew what to listen for, and they knew how to listen. Wiggy just needs to advance that fucking therapy narrative. He wants to, at the risk of anything, like if he was talking to, I don't know, uh, he was talking to Drew Barrymore, and if he was the host of the Tonight Show when she was seven years old, he'd say, are you in therapy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He Which, doesn't, he doesn't have the right uh, selection of questions. Yeah, never. And it's always the same old reliable, so we get nothing, and he can't listen. It's right. surprising. I think people have told him his interrupting really is a disservice to him, so mm-hmm. I think he's laid back on the interruptions, and it it allows for more uh, filler content to go longer, but you know, he's not listening. He's just sitting there waiting on his next question. That's right. He's just, it's like signposts. There's a lot of great questions to ask this guy who tells a great story, who yeah. is charming, who is funny, who has had a lot of life experience and mm-hmm. is genuinely like a softball interview. Yeah. He does all the work. Matthew right. does all the heavy lifting. Yes, he does. Wiggy. And I kind of blame Will Murray for this, for not reading the book right and getting the right questions. Maybe he did the right questions and maybe Wiggy just was hell-bent on skipping them and going on to his own narrative of therapy and whatever. He was determined to make Matthew see the error of his ways and say, like, look, this is abusive. How could you not be? He did this with um, recently. Who was it recently that he talked about? um, Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly. How could I even forget that abomination? Um, and the kid, but that kid didn't have the life experience of Matthew McConaughey. No. He, he very different people altogether. Um, not easy, mind you, but you know, it's well, it's still you know, it, talk, you're supposed to have ears. Go ahead. They're complete polar opposites, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. Matthew is conditioned to the Hollywood machine. Mm -hmm. Yet he comes off with a Q rating of like a gajillion, especially, I'm sorry, I'm a woman about his age and he still looks good after, you know, years of rough living, three kids, traveling, all the work. 
And there's just something about him. When you look at Machine Gun Kelly, it's like, you know, it's very uncomfortable. You you don't want to be near him. You don't want a part of that. But (laughs) (laughs) well, he's he's I find his I find him fascinating. And I would have went into this. Matthew did eventually go into it a little bit, talking about how he stopped doing certain roles like the how to lose a guy and 10 days or whatever, like romantic comedies because he was getting pigeonholed. Wiggy's interview focused on like three of his 50 movies that he's done. And most of it was about a time to kill. A time to kill was what? 96. It was before five, which was 97. Yeah. So I'll do my fact checking. (laughs) Play the saber dance. 1996. You are correct. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Okay. Vilmore gets the, I know whammies. Okay. So (laughs) what, so he, and, 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 okay, granted, it's not like The Godfather. A Time to Kill was a Grisham, one in a series of Grisham films made from his books that made some money because Grisham was hot at the time. I think uh, the, the, uh, the cl- what was the one uh, Matt Client. Damon did? Client was another one. I mean, uh, and the, the Firm was the Tom Cruise firm. one. That was, that was huge. And that was, that was his book that really, really made him. And um, either way, it was such so long ago, why would you harp on it the way he did? But he does that because he doesn't remember anything and he doesn't actually, he doesn't enjoy films. He claims he does. I don't believe he does. And we'll see later what he focuses on with the Wolf of Wall Street is actually quite telling. But either way, let's continue with this one. No, I think you need it. <laughs> well, look, I, I've made it 50 years to where I am right now. Maybe I need it. Maybe everybody needs it. I The things that, uh, you know, I would not call it abuse at all, um, at, at all. Um, did I get, a, you know, what today would be considered in today's time? Uh, you're not supposed to do. We got the belt instead of getting grounded. That's what we got growing up. It was quick. It hurt for the moment. We were never injured. Okay, so uh, so I hate to cut it up like that, guys, but it's necessary, as you know. He, yeah, I got the wooden spoon. Uh, I got slapped uh, with the belt, never, not in our house, but loads of wooden spoons. And that was considered normal. I don't consider it abuse. We, it would be abuse today. He's absolutely right. Like it, it, child services would have a field day with my parents, but child services probably never grew up that way. Go ahead. Our parents didn't have the coping skills that our no. generation has. <laughs> and wow. we see the difference because Wig was never punished. He, if he had ever gotten the strap, if he had ever really been punished, never. he would not be the way he is now. There's no, no. way. So. They just placated him all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Did it hurt? Did we cry? Sure. But the main thing is, why did we get in trouble? And when I look back at the whys I got in trouble and why from him, oh, I earned every one of them. It was for saying, it was for saying I can't instead of saying I'm having trouble. It was for saying I hate you to my brother because I got a whooping ten you don't hate. And it was for lying. Three pretty good reasons. To get in trouble. And I don't remember the butt whoop. And what I remember is going, shit, okay, that's a pretty good lesson. Okay, so there you go. And it's a perf- it's a, a perfect way to explain it. So this was, okay, number, <laughs> number nine. Quote, this is a quote from Wiggy. I'm trying to, as a reader, to, would you give your kid an ass whooping? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a direct quote. But Matthew, here's, here's my point. Here's my point. Yeah. I don't want to knock your dad. I know you love your dad. But I'm saying, it, it, just from, a, I'm trying as a reader, I'm saying, I, would you give your kid what you call an ass whooping? Your kid, would you give your kid an ass whooping for saying, I can't do something? <laughs> I just wanted to clip that quote because <laughs> the non, non-thought. <laughs> so number 10, Wiggy determined, to get, uh, Wiggy, Wiggy determined to get abuse stories out of Matt. That's what it was going to so but they Matthew, fight maybe, like that. But maybe but it was unintentional. But maybe it was unintentional. But I'm reading the book and I'm feeling sorry for the little boy that you were. You're really? a sweet boy. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you've written something profound here, and I don't even know I think in a way you were using this. Maybe it's all subconscious. But I think you were using this to say to your 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 world, to the to the world, this shit is crazy and it fucks a little boy. Okay, I have to cut that again, but this is what bothers me. Wiggy is 67? 66. 66, going on 67. And he's older than Matthew and is of the generation where he absolutely 
normally would have been given the switches or a slap or, you know, spanking, corporal punishment, yep. just you, you name it, whatever it is, a monkey wrench. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he totally deserved it. This is a person that's never had his ass kicked. He claims it was a Polish kid in the first private parts book. And then it goes Thanks on to say God. it was black people. So I don't believe he was, I don't believe he was ever beaten once punched. Yep. No, don't believe it. Maybe. Maybe Ellen slapped him around a bit. That was about it. <laughs> Ralph, when they decided to <laughs> scat wasn't enough, they had to get into roughhousing. Between play, Gre- yeah. yeah, between Greco-Roman. So let's continue. Boy up. I mean, to see your parents fight that violently is abusive. I mean, to see your mom's finger broken. And then you think that's love. And, and I was reading about I, Rooster, no, your brother. No, 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 no. What I say is I, none of those things could ever break. The love that our family had. Howard, I don't know how to explain it to you. I'm not going to say this is, like I said, across the board. This was not abusive. And I didn't see it as abusive. And this is the other thing. Wiggy is equating his parents fighting with each other as abusive. It's not abusive. It may be traumatic as a memory, but it's not abuse. Abuse is direct. It's, it's one on, it's, it's one on one, whether it's mental or physical or emotional, that abuse is not to be <laughs> confused with, you know, uh, tra- you know, traumatized from, uh, you know, from experiences you've seen. Go ahead. Well, just listening to Matthew talk about his parents, they were passionate and they were loving. Yes. And even till the day his dad died, they were making love. They were, yeah. they were going all out. Yeah, that sounds like a great love story to me, mm-hmm. but Wiggy didn't have that. No, Ben and Ray had a very formal business type relationship with their marriage. Very simple. And so Wiggy doesn't recognize love and passion. Mm-hmm. He didn't witness it in his early life. Not his fault. He has zero chance of ever reproducing passion and mm-hmm. true love. Mm-hmm. But people like Matthew McConaughey and his parents who have are the people that are gifted that way. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, the, the memories could be traumatic, but they can also be a teaching moment, too, to that's other right. people. And that's why he like wrote this book was like a memoir of the good, the bad and the ugly and what made him get through the hard times or what were the good times that kept him afloat. Mm-hmm. What was it like he used the good times to remember how to get back on track when it wasn't good. Mm-hmm. It was it was an interesting take. He wrote it before COVID and it took six to nine months to edit it down and get it out. So here he is. He's doing well, a book tour. There you go. And if you want another uh, counterpoint, a counter counterbalance, I think. I, uh, not counterbalance, it's just a, like a, something similar in the vein of this, this, what this book sounds like. I don't generally, uh, follow him anymore. AJ Benza, because his po- politics got really annoying and his, uh, Patreon was really about reading C Dan and just <laughs> getting paid for it. That's fine. Uh, but, um, I was looking more for the deep dives, the old Hollywood stuff that he lo- used to do on mysteries and scandals. I loved him with that. I love that show actually. Um, but he wrote a book called, uh, 74 and sunny, which was about his father and his upbringing and his, his, the you know, coming of age story of his cousin who was gay and, you know, like very much like buoys, except it was more, it was, it was designed to be a movie. And I sent it to a couple people I knew who were in the business. And I said, this would make a brilliant film. Um, and it would, it would be like, it really would be like one of those Oscar type films if you got the right people involved. And they all said, yes, it, uh, it's tough to get financing for films these days for even for indie films. And they said, but you're right. It is an absolutely great book. It's a, it's a really good script. So give them credit to that. And it's definitely worth reading guys. Even if you don't follow him or you think he's a douchebag, that's, I, I would check that book out. Uh, yeah. A lot of garbage to sift through out there. You got it's hard to find good quality these days. There's so Low, much. Way more chaff amongst the wheat than there used to be, especially music. On so some guy on the synthwave um, Facebook, just as an aside, was saying, "How do you get you know an audience on Spotify?" Like these days, dude, you gotta people have to sift through more crap than ever to get to the good stuff. So right. go to All Music and check out your you know suggestions and have fun with it. All right. Do I have in the book enough stories of the times when actually our family was incredibly loving and affectionate? Maybe not as many for the reasons I just said. I love telling the the violent discipline stories because they were the times where the love looked like it would be tested, but it never had a chance against the love. 
There was it was not abusive. I was not scarred. All right. We had a lot of I love you, but I don't like you right now in our house. We never questioned whether we were loved. Like I said, I want to run away from home. My parents beat me to my room to pack my bags. Okay, so I mean, loads of people have these stories. It's not unique yeah. to to Matthew. I'm not trying to denigrate it. So I, I don't want to play the rest of that clip because we got so many more to get through. All right, but let, let's, let's go through number eleven. Matthew laughs off Sigmund Freud. <laughs> so you have no anger toward your parents about the uh, you know when I read about you ten years old, you put a little Cracker Jack tattoo on your body, and you you you, you got an ass whooping so bad that your buttocks bled. And and I, and I feel and, and I feel you should be angry about that. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that as an adult, it might have even affected your ability to parent and stuff because you you've had such a bad example. And you laugh at that, but I <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so Matthew's laughing. And if you were really any kind of moral psychologist, why wouldn't you have told Wiggy a long time ago? Look, grow the fuck up. Yeah. You know, like this There's- is and just cut the shit. It's so competitive. Like, yeah, I just I feel like I'm being MK Ultra when I listen to this. <laughs> I need help, Fillmore. How many edibles would even just a replay be worth? <laughs> I mean, just to get through it. Oh my god! We like honestly, when you have to resort to, when you have to resort to substances to get through a podcast that or a radio show, there's something wrong with the product. <laughs> I'm 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 going to start researching microdosing because Joe Rogan tells me it's good. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like does does quite frankly work better if you're on mescaline? I don't know. <laughs> Someone tell me, do the experiment. I think Durox, he I I have a feeling it might just be alcohol fueled, but uh you know, the show is better on some kind of substance. Who knows? Anyway, let's hey, get Everybody continue. needs something to get through the day. It's fine. Yes. And in COVID just 2020, right, I I get it. Right amount. I, right. Controlled, controlled chaos, guys. <laughs> oh my You're funny. goodness. You're funny. Uh, why am I funny? Why is this funny? You're funny. I love your, I love your, I love your psychoanalysis trying to take this down to the, to the, to the, to the most dramatic and great use. My butt, I didn't actually bleed. That right. actually was a friend of mine's dad. Um, Oh. Who who gave me a whooping on the side of the road and his son because we put the Cracker Jack tattoos on. Um, Who are you? Who are you? Come here. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> no, I, can I give you... He wants you. to give him a hug. He wants to give him a hug. He wants to suck his dick is why he wants to give him a hug. It's not because of any trauma. Fuck. Uh, yeah, didn't, you, didn't your skin crawl just there? <laughs> yeah. It still does, even on the second or third time of hearing it. Okay, so let's keep going. Beating you. Uh, I mean, the, your parents are beating you. The neighbors are beating you. My God, Matthew, what the fuck is with your life? I mean, this book is going to blow your mind, ladies and gentlemen. I, I suggest you buy this. It really is well done. But I saw pain. You know, these fist fights too. You know, Matthew talks about yeah. rites of passage. Like, you weren't a man because you didn't stand up. Like, Okay, so again, again this is, guys, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. You can't run a fucking radio show like a therapy session every single fucking time. Because there are some people out there, guys, guess what, whose lives really just didn't suck that much. And guess what, Wig? Yours didn't either. So, you know, you know like, read a book. Why don't you read a book? <laughs> what you're recommending is book. You never read it. <laughs> Will did the job, or Kaplan did the job. <laughs> Raven's, <laughs> Raven's twisting her, her, her face just like Daffy and Duck Amuck. <laughs> I'm rocking like JD with Asperger's right now. This is the angering moment when he has no concept of pain or loss or Mm -hmm. grieving. And he's talking to Matthew like, you know, let me give you a hug. Like, no, I don't want a hug. I just want you to acknowledge that life is shitty sometimes and sucks. And we need to have compassion for people. That's it. Public service announcement. Have compassion. Have empathy. And and not make like just be real like but you can't that's the thing like what yeah. I want from him he's not capable of giving me right so obviously <laughs> I, human, my life human, has been human, in vain this is human all in emotion vain. <laughs> he can't he can't emote and it's all it's really like <laughs> oh it says here in the manual I'm supposed to be empathetic uh, hold on uh, it says here on page seventy must hug victim yeah <laughs> like, nod and make eye contact right. Okay, so let's try our best. Rooster and your dad, your brother Rooster, gets into a fight you describe in the book. 
with your dad in a bar or something. I forget exactly where it was. And and you're and Rooster, after a four minute fight, or he knocks your father out for four minutes, knocks him down on the floor, knocks him out. And your father gets up after four minutes of being unconscious. And he says to Rooster, you're that's my boy. And he gives now, him a big uh, hug. Yeah. Tears coming down my dad's eyes. Hugs me. That's my boy. Yeah, go ahead. Wiggy's super jealous right now. I think They're so. Fighting. They're yeah. loving. There's he passion. He wanted all that. He wants to go to a bar and get in a fight with MGK, with Machine right. Gun Kelly. Right. You know, because that means guys want to fuck you if they're fighting with you, apparently. <laughs> so he's lathering They want to blow you if they're fighting yeah. you. So he wants to fight. He wants to blow. <laughs> he wants to fuck Matthew and his father. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's my point. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Beautiful. Matthew, that's what? crazy. Yes, absolutely crazy, but beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> number twelve is called "Wig." Would have been an attentive father if Ashley, Deborah, and Emily had been a list. <laughs> you know, it is a wild life you have led. It's the exact. I have lived with fears, and and uh, I don't leave my house. I'm talking. Forget about COVID. I don't leave my house when it's nice outside, and there's no diseases. I mean, you uh, you have seen every fucking crazy thing in the world. It's amazing. It didn't drive you crazy. It's so, amazing. I mean, so what was the res- so the result of being a recluse asshole, reclusive asshole? How did that help him in the end? How has that helped him? It hasn't. None. Uh, it's he's been able to avoid every fear he has. He's been able to be more of an asshole mm-hmm. with a um, uh, free pass, and uh, yeah, no one's telling him anything. He's just. <laughs> You know, not getting the marbles he wants for his contract. <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean to make light of it, guys, but I have a feeling that when Ben Stern actually dies, Wiggy's going to be so angry. He's going to be crying it because he took away a victim. He took away a target of his anger by yeah. dying. You know, it will not be about sadness because he's gone. It will actually be because he won't be able to deal with something being taken out of his life that he didn't himself push away. Even in death, he's going to mock his father. Yes. He's going to deride him so bad into mm-hmm. the point where it's going to be like, oh, his dad was a dick. If anybody yep. didn't know any better or listen to us or follow the history of Howard Stern and how Ben did tons of things for Howard. And tried. But yeah, absolutely. None of them took or none of them really produced any real talent other than this whole radio thing, which he was born into. Dad mm-hmm. was a recording engineer. So what mm-hmm. do you expect? I mean, that's yeah. all he had access to. Correct. So this next one is called The Wigged Automaton Googles Sadness. Why do I feel sad by that story? You tell me. I feel sad <laughs> that a father says, you're my son if you punch me in the face. You're my son <laughs> if you, you know, if uh, you're called, you know, it, 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 it's such oh, a harsh well, way to be brought up. I felt bad. I don't know. I, I feel <laughs> sad. You know, that's no. okay. I mean, look, I, I, I don't. <laughs> He's almost making Matthew feel sorry for him. In, in like, Matthew's like, uh, no, it's okay, buddy. It's all right. Don't worry. It's like you're the one. You're the oh. one bleeding, but I'm crying. Yeah. <laughs> comfort you. Comfort me because you hug got me. Punched. I need a hug. Number 14, abused children equals great ad libs about jerking off. I think you speak about these things because you want the world to know that you were abused. That's my theory. And it worked on me. I had such compassion. I think you're one of the best actors I've ever seen. You know, you you talk about your fucking, you know, shit. I mean, I I could go into it. uh, Your your soliloquy in a time to kill. When you're you're defending Mm. a black man who has killed a white man, that speech... Unfucking believable. This is what he remembers: a black man def- against the white man. He doesn't remember the characters. He doesn't remember, you know. I-, I bet you ten bucks. Before this fucking interview, he went on YouTube and looked up a scene and saw it, and never saw the movie I- in in its context. Never. No, Don't believe it. it. It could be as simple as Will or Jason telling him about the movie. Yep. And writing it down for him, and then him trying to emote while reading. <laughs> Said script, Your Honor. <laughs> Commander Data. <laughs> In that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio movie with... Uh, DiCaprio. Uh, you steal the whole Wolf fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. That one scene where you teach Leonardo DiCaprio about... <laughs> it's also great when Aww. your guest has to correct you on the name of the movie you just mispronounced. 
Or the actor. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a score. Yeah, I mean it's an actor, yeah. Scorsese film and you can't remember. Jerking off oh twice God, a day. Been... I've so never fun, fucking but... seen better. It's the fucking best scene ever. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, by the way, on that scene, did you I don't know the truth about this. Is that a scripted thing or was that coming right off the top of your head about how you you know, in this racket you have to uh, jerk off twice a day to relieve your stress if you're gonna work on Wall Street? <laughs> the part he remembers of the movie <laughs> not the one about the, you know not about doing, time to kill this no about wolf of wall street and jerking off right not about doing coke off of marco robbie's ass <laughs> like, uh, you know, right right like everybody else okay so number 15 howard can't remember his kids but he remembers jerking off he, he, when you turn to him and you say how often do you jerk off? And he goes, I don't know, three, four times a week. He goes, rookie number. Matthew goes, rookie numbers. You need to jerk off twice a day. I mean, I don't remember dialogue from movies, but that I do. That is a fucking brilliant performance. It real, I mean, bravo. Would you call that brilliant, really? Funny, uh, maybe, but, but brilliant? I'll say 100% projection alert. Yes. Because... All Wiggy does is masturbate. What do you think a narcissist is going to do with themselves all the time? They're going to jerk off to themselves. Yeah, self-love. They are. They listen to their show and jerk off or watch an old video of themselves. Um, or, you know, webcam rando boys who are, yeah. you know, semi-legal on the Internet. But I digress. Okay. This he, next clip is called... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. He just... He's projecting onto Matthew a lot of his fantasies. Yeah, I believe so. Next one is called Greatest Aphrodisiac for Bingo, folks. And by scary, I mean, you know, there's no greater aphrodisiac, <laughs> no greater drug than fame in Hollywood and being wanted on a set and getting $14.5 million. I mean, that is the greatest turn on to be that successful. Did your mm -hmm. agent turn to you and go, listen, you are fucking insane okay, and you need to go well, talk to someone this is with regards to the uh the you know going out, out of the uh, rom-com thing and you know trying to get new uh, parts for himself which was actually a good discussion well not a good discussion he was amazing talking about it it was it, no, no, it was fascinating to hear matthew talk about it a little bit i enjoy him talking it's just the the questions with aphrodisiac like that yeah. is such a hit you need to catalog all this. <laughs> exactly. Number 17 is just called Spacey because I was, uh, uh, I don't know yeah. why I didn't, uh, you know, he talked about a little bit, what did you do? Because you had a, you, he was in the same movie. Didn't mean they were fucking but bosom buddies, but he had to address it. The whole movie was great. Kevin Spacey. By the way, when, when, you, when you're in a movie with Kevin Spacey and he's so terrific and everything, and now the guy has scandal. Do you, are you, do you, I don't know what your relationship is with Kevin Spacey. Do you call a guy like that? Because I always think that's the most awkward thing. There's a guy you probably well, know you're, you're friendly with, yep. and then all of a sudden yep. you have scandal. Well, Kevin Spacey and I did not remain like great close friends. We, when we saw each other at any event, we always looked forward to seeing each other and always had some great conversations. Um, I and by the way, my brother and I work with him on a movie, uh, it, it, uh one of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Kevin Spacey's movies and regard this was a long long time ago and he said he couldn't have been nicer he was the nicest person to the crew he was uh I mean, I'm not trying to den I'm not trying to you know make light of um uh, anything that he has been accused of and in fact I can't really watch him because of the uh, since the news came out about him and certainly Brian Singer I've written him off in his fucking movies but um uh just to, from from a anecdotal perspective he he gets a lot of there's depending who you talk to, he's either the nicest guy or a fucking molester. Go All ahead. Right. <laughs> well, he's a sociopath, so he yeah. has two sides. He has a Jekyll and a Hyde. Right. And whatever's going to get him the farthest is what's going to shine through. Yeah. I'll, the charming side. You know, he's a shapeshifter for Christ's mm -hmm. sake. Yeah. Um, notice Wiggy drops articles here. Has scandal. It's not has scandal, motherfucker. It's has a scandal. Yeah. <laughs> or has scandals. <laughs> It's not I, has scandal. Stop saying it. You said it twice. I, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> he have good time. I did reach out, and he and I had a wonderful conversation um, since those allegations came out on him. You know, um, just as just as some sport, just to check and see how he's doing. We, we had a great conversation. Um, I did reach out to him. Yeah, that's always so awkward. I know some people who have been in scandals, and you're like, do I call them? Do I leave him alone? What do I do here? I mean, it's so weird.
Okay. There's nothing <laughs> weird. There's nothing weird about it. Okay. When Woody Allen, the allegations about Woody Allen first came out, there was tons of people who kind of did the, um, I'll give you the analogy at the Oscars. There was a lifetime achievement award for Elia Kazan who, uh, named people in the, from the, the blacklist days. He, he outed communists when okay. it would, it was detrimental. And so, but I mean, this guy directed on the waterfront, Viva Zapata. He, you know, he was a brilliant, brilliant fucking director. And some people applauded and some people stood up and some people sat down and didn't applaud. And that was, it was made like anybody who sat down and didn't applaud was, that was their way of silently protesting. Okay. Okay. Now, when it comes to these fucking, you know, when Woody Allen had his thing happen, loads of people would not work with him anymore, but didn't, didn't go against him. Was it for self-preservation or was it, um, this is how I'm going to deal with it because, I, it, what's the point of the controversy? He's already getting fucked. So that will happen to him. Karma will happen to him. Maybe. So in this case, Wiggy, he's got pictures of him with Matt Lauer, pictures of right. him with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> and these are people he would normally have star fucked regularly. Yes. He would have had his puff, his chest all puffed out like a peacock. Yeah. And now what does a narcissist do when your friends get in trouble? Right. You run for Z Hills. Absolutely. <laughs> you turn your turn and get the F out of there and act mm-hmm. like none of it ever happened. Try to erase it, get it removed yep. from Google. Yep. And, you know, start looking for bigger, brighter friends like Machine Gun Kelly, mm-hmm. Post Malone. There's a clip I'm going to skip called Movie Set Family Question, which is all about, he said the same thing about <laughs> Machine yeah. Gun Kelly. I'm not going to bother. Do you fall but in there's... love with your coworkers? Blah, right. blah, blah. Exactly. Number 19 is Oscar projection. It's a short clip, but I thought it was funny because it's exactly what Week would do. There can't be a greater high than on Oscar night when you look into fucking Christian Bale's eyes and Leonardo DiCaprio and you go, you two fuckers, I just beat you. I mean, what is a bigger, what is a bigger high than that? I'm- okay, so it's a longer clip, but I'm not going to bother with the rest because he laughs, it, he laughs it off. and Good taste of uh, what he's, where his mind is. Yeah, and this next clip is called Wiggy's Therapy Two-Step Away from the Truth. You know, it was tough for eight years, but we went through it and we're on the other side of it. It's good. Yeah, that's what when I read that part, I was like, he's this is in context to his mother being estranged from him from about eight years uh, before about eight years because she was doing like uh, home um, reviews of his home or something like that. And he thought it was a a betrayal of like, you know, trust pretty much. Uh, Go ahead. No, she did a special on hard copy. He yes, talks that about was... it in the interview. Yeah. And he called her while she was watching it and she still denied it. Like he yeah. could hear the TV in the background. But yeah, she gave up all kinds of stupid dirt on him. Took him eight yeah. years. He forgave her. Now they're back and happy together. Right. But that's not enough for Wig. I kind of like, oh, man, you know, that's the fame thing that uh, really is startling. Do you think she was jealous in you some realize ways? You got famous. So what happened? Did you change more? Did people around you change more? Uh... You know, I, I, I went into therapy. I was going to say this to you <laughs> because there's a certain part of you that I recognize because I have it in myself. Okay. He can, compl- I have to cut that up anyway, because it's a long clip. <laughs> Raven's like, I win. I win <laughs> because you asked me, did you, you told me I got to pull this clip. And I, I after having Thank heard you. it, we all know why he completely failed to answer the question. He yeah. sidestepped. He sidestepped it completely. <laughs> Everything. When it, Bob went Z, back, went still? into therapy. That was no different than going to a restaurant. And uh, I must be hungry subconsciously because <laughs> I, I keep giving food analogies. Going to a restaurant and the guy going, "Listen, uh, would you like uh, something else to drink?" And he goes, uh, "Yeah, I'd love to know the time." You know, like there's a disconnect oh, between right. the question you're being asked and not we not wanting. You could tell in that in that moment he's like. Yeah, I did change. Yeah, I did become an asshole, but I can't verbalize that. Nope. Yeah. Nope, not at all. And yeah. I love that Matthew turned the question around on him, but mm-hmm. I knew we were never going to get an answer. I oh. just started typing all my answers. Right. I mean, the, the one time he got we got a, a, an answer out of him that was directly related to, like, finance or something was Wendy Williams. She asked him years ago in that infamous interview, do, what you, do you prefer, the fame or the money? He goes, oh, the money. Yeah. Which is not true. He actually wants both, but mostly he wants the money yeah it's a loaded question let's just yeah. keep going <laughs> yeah now when i first walked into a psychiatrist's office i would sit there and tell him stories and laugh at them about uh, my life growing up 
And he turned to me stone faced for the first time and said, I don't see anything funny in this. I hear a lot of sadness. And I was like, oh, hey, this guy's crazy. I mean, so he's admitting he put, he used to do shtick and we've got clips of him saying this over the years. He put on an act for the fucking psychiatrist. He performed for him. Uh, and then, yeah, go ahead. He bored the shit out of the psychiatrist. I think so too. Right. There was nobody, there was no Jackie there to laugh at his stupid stories. So, you know, it wasn't funny. <laughs> you didn't even give him anything good to dig into, into his life. It was just boring and sad. And he just yeah. looked at him yeah. and was like, okay, just keep yeah. talking. And exactly. The living and talking about this shit and, and being funny about it. And then as I went in, you know, I've been going for years, all of a sudden I could see the seriousness of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, I had to change in order to open my eyes. And that's why I'm so fascinated by your book. Those stories about your mother are very telling to me. Um, mm -hmm. Having the strength to cut your mother off for eight years. That takes that's to me braver than getting into the lion cage. Honest to God. Oh, fucking Lord. This next clip is called you were about to enter another world, another dimension in which pelicans fuck horses and die. And it's in relation to it's the context is Matthew's father came and went at the same time. He he, he fucked yeah. his mother and died having sex. He had a heart attack, obviously. That's a sweet. Story. Did your mother uh, talk to you about that? Was he inside of her and dropped dead, or did he pull out and then drop dead? I'm curious. I, I you know I never I I cringed hard when I heard this. His sweet story just became completely creepy and disgusting. <laughs> I am just. <laughs> Like, God damn, you ruin everything. Just let the guy fucking talk. But no, you got to stick it in there with your creepiness. Literally. Oh. Yes. I think Where I'll, is I'll, she? Wake her up. I'll ask her over breakfast. Let me go wake her up. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, you know, I say to, I say to my wife, sometimes I breathe very heavy when I'm fucking my wife. And she'll say, another bit of, fi another bit of fiction. What, <laughs> what was pre <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Bob Ralph. D, are you still awake? <laughs> yeah, please, we need your advice. Say to me, Jesus Christ, I think you're having a heart attack. I said, honey, <laughs> there is no better way for me to go out than fucking you. Because I love fucking my wife even after knowing her 20-something years. I just love it. I, there's something about that woman. Okay, the Dolph, he, this, is, this is way too much. Um, oh, I'm sorry, way I too... keep interrupting. No, no, I'll no, go ahead. On. Please, no. Just substitute Beth for Ralph. So yeah. he gets winded when he's fucking Ralph, not Beef. Well, he doesn't have any fucking muscle on him. <laughs> so oh. those <laughs> strawberries, not enough energy. Man. And I understand where your old man was coming from. And I'd be happy. I'd be honored to fuck my wife and, and die. And, and the old man, what a way to he go. did it. What a way to go. He, and he, he would, what a libido. He would be angry because <laughs> he, he would much prefer to fuck someone and they die so he could still be around. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I'm just. I'm thinking of the interview with Joe Rogan again, right? So Matthew yeah. McConaughey, when he lost weight to be in Dallas Buyers Club, he lost yeah. 50 pounds and he went from 185 to 135. Right. So he said his joints gave out. He just got winded. He didn't mm -hmm. have the ability to do physical activity. He couldn't exercise. Of course. The guy was on 600 calories a day. Yeah. So isn't that sort And he said even when he quit eating, his body would keep losing weight because that's what the body was trained to do. That's and it really took a while to level out and uh, get his metabolism right yep. before he killed himself. His body was eating himself. It's great. Like I said, if you, if you're, if you can bear Matthew McConaughey high on himself for a good two hours, go watch it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really much more interesting interview than this ever could be. And Last that's it. Last clip is called Projection Alert. Wiggy doesn't say, says he doesn't know if he could trust good actors not to be fake to him. Yeah, what the fuck, man? That's acting. That's acting. You know, if I was friends with you, I don't know if I could trust you because you're such a good actor. Maybe you'd be fake with me. But you know, another, another, do we ever get to really know the, the person when we're friends with an actor? Because you're, in a sense, so good at the deception of being other people. Mm. Okay, and like uh, uh, that was all I needed to get from that. It's about like another twenty yeah. seconds, but we do it. We don't need more than that. Isn't that so fucking telling? It really is. It's a huge fear, and yet it's one he propagates himself mm -hmm. with the projection of always being something he's not. Yeah, in Hampton circles, in L.A. business meetings, whatever. Right. On the air, it's mm -hmm. it's a. He even said he is doing. 
acting 98% of the time. And then there's like 2% of him that's real. Well, the, the only, uh, th- this is the thing guys, we've, uh, we've run our, our limit into much, as much as we can record tonight. Um, there's a little more to do, but, um, this is only the 28th of October that I have clipped. It was all about gray rocking and it, because it's so vast, we will not be able to do it. But in that section is a thing about his gay quantifying and his mysterious friends that he has that, you know, went from by to this and it was all about Ralph and it, it's nonsense when you hear it. But when you do hear it, there's at one point he's like. Yeah, I, there's loads of people I know that lived the one way for a long time and then decided, well, I'm going to be yeah. with this way instead. It all sounded very much about what he is about to do, which is to come out as bi or come out as gay when, you know, it, to get, I don't know, attention or to, I don't know, for some strange reason. I, I have a feeling if he's not renewed and he has no gig, he's going to still need attention. So this is one way to get it. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure you're, you're – I. You're on the right track. I agree with you on this. And he's so predictable. Mm-hmm. It's sad how mm-hmm. how many things that we've seen coming and then they just roll out right in front of us. So, yep. Uh, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning into Quite Frankly. You can check us out on a number of podcast apps, Podbean most prominently, but uh, Pocket Cast, Google Podcast now, uh, Player FM, tune in. YouTube, of course, please subscribe to our channel. We just did a thousand subs. I'm really happy about that. And, Yay. uh, and, uh, that's all organic. I don't have 20 accounts that I've just <laughs> created for that purpose. And the other thing is, uh, guys, we really do want that gray rocking segment with Ronnie, but we're going to have to make a whole separate episode for it. And maybe with the gay stuff, we'll just do another breakdown, maybe even next week. Um, uh, because it is really yeah, something, we can do that. It, it's something to listen to, but you were right. Vast amount of gray rocking all that week. Hours. Like, yes. I, I want to say 75% of three shows. Yeah. So nine hours times 0.75. Someone do the math out there. Yeah. But it's just, wow. Yeah. Um, the gay stuff falls right into it. So yeah. it's a good double subject that just, like, we could take it two to three hours. I hope to keep it really, like, hour and a half because no, yeah. one, no one should have to go through what we did. No, and actually, <laughs> I was going to ask you right off right off the bat, I was going to ask you, um, you, you have to figure that, like as I do, that Stephanie sat Ronnie down and said, "These guys are all cunts. These people yeah. that you work for, you work for, and we're going to do this. And you have your the rest of your life to worry about. And it, life is too short, especially now, to worry about mm-hmm. what these assholes think and about. So that last the twenty eighth, especially the most recent this Wednesday, I was amazed because Ronnie's been like that before. He's been obstinate, but usually when he's been wrong." Usually when he's done something wrong, he goes, yeah, okay, whatever, because he's waiting for the the abuse to stop. This was very different. Right. He just stayed calm, held his ground, and it it was good to see, but it was painful because it took forever to get through, and they were relentless. And I think I even did the numbers, and I called it a gangbang in the live thread because it was anywhere from like eight or nine people to one, Ronnie. Yep. Or... And the most with callers, I got up to 17 to 18 people to Ronnie. Mm-hmm. So it was 18 people against Ronnie, whether they were real or fake. I mean, yeah. I didn't get into all that, but right. that was what he was up against. And he didn't lose his cool once. So good yep. for Ronnie. Yep. And I think Steph's a big part of that. She knows that they have an end in sight and yep. she wants him healthy and stresses and good for him. So yep. we're team Ronnie. Up. We're team Ronnie all the way. So as far as this is concerned anyway, but uh, I want to thank everybody that's uh, uh, pr- subscribed to our Patreon and Bob D's got a new mic and we're anxious to try our next recording with him with that. And hopefully I don't sound like shit. <laughs> so as long as everybody else sounds good and I am on top of my P's and Q's, then uh, everything will go great. So thank you guys so much. We love you. Stay safe and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye. Oh, just real quick, I was off of calling because uh, I just wanted to Bye. save my truth <laughs> on the See you later. Piece of you. Thanks, Eric. Back back. <laughs> back back. All right, buddy. Back back. Eric, what? I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I said the tour that I'm. Take care, say. man. Back back. <laughs> Don't ever call back. <laughs>